Hello and welcome back to the Western Wilds. Our first field is ready for planting, so we're going to get the MB track seeding at the winter wheat. Meanwhile, the flower needs unloading from the windmill and the silage needs loading into the BGA. Let's get farming. First thing we need to do today, though, is head up to the shop because before we can actually get seeding, we need some seed. We've got a little bit left in our cedar from last time from when we did the grass uh, but it isn't a huge amount and to be honest i think we might need to grab a bag of fertilizer as well especially considering half this field is going to require double the amount of fertilizer we would normally have so let's bring this round here and park this up i'm gonna open the back of this so when they bring the fertilizer out, we can get it immediately loaded into the back of our truck. There we go. Turn this off. So we'll head into the shop. We'll put that away. And looking at this, we actually have a decent dump trailer available today to purchase. Uh, that herbis trailer is really nice and would go very nice on the back of the... Uh, MB track and I think takes up to 14,000 liters. If we make enough money today, uh, then we might go and grab this because this would be a quite a useful piece of kit for our farm. However, uh, what we do need to go and grab is some pallets. Uh, we want to grab a pallet of the solid fertilizer, 750 liters. So details on that and buy one of those. We might have to pick up another one of these later, possibly. And then on top of that, I also want to pick up a pallet of seeds. So we'll buy that too. Hasn't been horribly expensive, but it has been an amount that uh, we could have possibly done without spending. All loaded up into the back of our truck very nicely for us as well. So we'll just clamp those down. Clamps the seeds down properly, but not the fertilizer, which I always find interesting. We will then close up the back. Oh, we need to start up the engine to do that, apparently. And away we go. So da back down to the farm. Uh, we will pull up behind our cedar and get that reloaded. And I think, actually, we might need to put some fuel into the MB track as well. You can tell it's getting quite late in the year because the shadows are so long at half past eight in the morning. Uh, actually, we might be able to pull this up alongside and uh, do this. Yeah, there we go. So let's pull the back open and then jump out and we can get this loading up. I'm going to put some fuel in this first while we're here and while it's turned off. So that is filling up that nicely. We should then be able to fill up first with fertilizer and then with seeds. So, yeah, that has filled up both of those and given us some that is uh, extra on top. And put this into forward and we'll head out to the field. We'll set this going again. I think we'll use course play as we've got a defined field for this one and very easily get this going while we come back with the David Brown. I actually don't think we're going to need more than one headland with this either. Of course, to create like that, we only need one headland with the width of this. And we'll do the center first. Generate me a course. Yeah, that has not got many lines on it at all. So uh, down to the far side of the field. I'm not going to drive all the way over all of this plow. Uh, we'll just drive down here like this. And this should take no time at all for this. Uh, it's, it is a pity that we weren't able to get this fully uh, fertilized as I was hoping. Uh, so it is going to cost that little bit more. But as long as this fertilizer lasts the whole way across this field, we should be fine. Bring this to here. First waypoint, and away it goes. It immediately started seeding, but it's getting the job done. We're going to have to roll this as well today, so the sooner this does this, the better. 
And that means it's time to get our David Brown out. Now, what I want to start with is sorting out our flower. We've got quite a fair amount of it sitting in the windmill along with a load of unprocessed soybeans because basically it's run out of space so i'm gonna get our rear forks on this and get these moved i'm very much beginning to err towards getting uh getting this to work or getting something other than this uh, it was a nice idea, but it's it's not really working that well for me. Uh, either a set of three point ones of these, or uh, possibly uh, actually just biting the bullet and getting a front loader on here. Again, not something I was looking to do. I wanted to do something a little bit different on this series, uh, but yeah, I think it's I think it's gonna have to be a. a Oh, a, uh, a front loader. It just works that much easier. This is really, really annoying <laughs> to use most of the time. And I'd, uh, I think I'd rather have something else. Not that it can't be used. Not that it's completely unusable. It's just a little bit of a pain compared to other ways. I'm very much used to to driving this forwards and, and turning the wheel a certain way and it and it working whereas this when i want to go backwards i need to go forwards and when i want to go forwards i need to go backwards with it attached to the back of this and it ends up being too confusing at times this might be the last one we're gonna grab from the windmill for now because the other one that's sitting here might not be a full pile. I need to just check that quickly. Sometimes it, it does put partial ones out here. But let's just see what's that. No, that is a full one, so we'll move that as well. We can't check how much uh, the sorghum has created, how much flour the sorghum's created yet. Because it's still processing. There's still about 6,000 liters, which is nearly half of it. Uh, still to process through, uh, which is a fair old amount, especially as we seem to have almost doubled the amount of flour we've got already. I mean, there is... So we had, I think it was 9,500 litres roughly. Uh, there's 18,000 litres here, I'm fairly sure. What, three by six, yeah. 18,000 litres with stuff still to process. I will go and double check that, uh, but I'm pretty sure that we've doubled it. And in here, yeah, we've still got nearly 7,000 liters of sorghum to go. Uh, we are up to 500 liters of flour out of here. So yeah, there's a fair amount of flour to go. I think the sorghum is gonna prove to be a very, very profitable way for us to create flour. Uh, it, it seems to be going through at an incredible rate. I will double check that in a moment, um, but for now, certainly, yeah, we seem to be in a very good place thanks to that sorghum. The other question we got today is how much silage has been created from our grass yesterday we go and have a look in here you can see that uh with the grass silage all done and through we've got a hundred and eighteen thousand five hundred and eighty one liters uh that should be nearly sixty thousand pounds that we're gonna get off this today as well that is incredibly good i am so happy about the level that we should get just gonna make sure that our bga is turned off we're not we're gonna process all of this overnight we'll fill as much up as we can now uh with thirteen thousand liters a go it's gonna take us 11 loads to get this in so uh shouldn't take us too long to do that it's a fairly swift journey and yeah, we're looking good. We're looking like we're going to be making a lot of money on this farm over the next couple of months, which is just going to make a massive difference. 
Uh, we should have a completely different farm by uh, New Year. The MB track is coming up to the end of the field. It's just heading around to start its headlands. Looks to be a bit of a gap at the ends here. So I think we're going to have to be a little bit of a cleanup to do. It seems to have, um, yeah, had a bit of a mess up. Otherwise, uh, liking it. It's, it's done a good job on here and should be finished in the not too distant future. We're about halfway through this now. We've got about 60,000 left to get into the BGA. I think this is uh, load six, if I remember correctly. So yeah, pretty much halfway through with this out of both. We've got 53,000 left in the fermenting silo. And we got 58,000. Uh, uh, actually, we're nearly full in the BGA. So I'm going to have to start the BGA processing this in order to actually uh, make sure we've got enough space. So we'll activate the silage processing. I was going to do that overnight, um, but uh, I think that it's best just to keep it going. And while that's processing some of that through, uh, what we want to do is go and sort out our cedar, which has already finished that field. I think with this, we can probably take on bigger fields. We definitely have the space to be able to do that uh, and the speed with this to be able to do that. We could have, we could have possibly done one field here rather than two. Uh, what I do need to do uh, before we go and continue is just clear up these patches. Uh, it's only used half of this to do this field, which is amazing considering how much I thought it was going to need. That bodes very well for us getting a spring crop in. And considering how well the sorghum has done uh, in our mill by the looks of things, uh, I think that is going to be the way to go with the second field. Uh, do winter wheat and sorghum, and uh, that will work very nicely for us. We can prepare the field next time for seeding. And as I was saying last video, I think what we're going to do is try and get as much through next time as possible. Process things as they come. And then skip a couple of months, uh, make sure that we get everything in, and uh, and make sure that we can at least cover our ultimate target on this series. And as far as our ultimate target goes, I think uh, what I'm going to do is aim to make pancakes. I've never done pancakes on a series. I was talking about it possibly us doing cakes, but I've done cakes before. Whereas I think doing pancakes on here uh, would be really interesting. So I've downloaded Yossa's uh, Pancake Factory and we are going to get a limited number of cows, uh, a limited number of chickens, just to give us a few eggs, uh, a little bit of milk and a little bit of butter. Uh, we've actually got a small dairy I can put on the farm as well that's fairly inexpensive. And uh, the plan is by the end of next year to be making pancakes, uh, funding all the construction of everything we need uh, with this year's crops and, uh, and the next uh, year or so's worth of silage. I think that is going to be the best way for us to go and uh, it will be a really interesting way of finishing off this series. So let's just get this round and down there like that. We've got the bottom corner to sort as well. And then that is this field cleaned up. And once we've finished transferring over the remaining silage into the BGA, uh, we'll be able to come and roll this. We're going to be left with about one and a half thousand litres in the fermenting silo. We've got 14,500 in there at the moment. We're going to get one more load out. We still have quite a, lo uh, quite a lot to process. So uh, there's a, a decent amount still to go through. 
which is all good but our first lot should be paying us in a minute uh, we've got 51,000 litres of electricity. How you measure electricity in litres, I don't know. But 50, 52,000 that's going to pay. And there we go. We're up to 31,518. Uh, that is brilliant. Uh, we are well on the way. So we're going to end up, as I uh, suspected, with about 60,000 from this load of silage that is a, a massive increase over the last time we cut these fields uh, last time we cut these fields i think we were lucky to get 10 to 15 so uh yeah we got a huge increase in yield off these fields having plowed them and replanted them uh, and it's gonna be very very interesting to see how much we get off there next month i don't think we're going to be able to get a full load of fertilizer on them unfortunately yeah there we go the last 1581 liters so i think we're going to be down because of that i think we're going to be down as well uh, because uh, we're not letting it fully grow i would love to compare it when it's fully grown but that, uh, that I don't think is going to happen either. So I'll bring this in and park it up. Actually, this could go in the shed these days. We've got that shed there. It's not used for anything else. We might as well put this under cover. We, the one other thing I would like to get undercover, I can't get undercover here. Then we need to get another lean-to because we need somewhere to put the combine and we need somewhere to put the cedar. So that is on our list. There we are. Uh, we'll give this a wash and uh, a bit more fuel. And then, yeah, we're going to have to get the roller out on it. And go and roll that newly seeded field. And because we want to turn that around today and get that done, I think we're going to end up with about 60,000 at the end of today. So uh, next time, I think we'll probably end up building the bakery. And, uh, well, uh, to be honest, I could build the bakery right now if I wanted and start that stuff processing. But I don't want to proud too much in for now uh, let's go and roll this field get this wheat in properly and we can go from there because it's not even midday yet we get to see if all of these stones disappear again and i think they're all still small stones we're gonna go round. we're not gonna lift this so we're gonna do this in a realistic way I'm amazed at how much we've got achieved in so little time today. That has uh, that has been a big boon. And then to be able to get out and do some field work myself is excellent. And yeah, those stones are going. So as long as we overlap, we'll be fine. I actually think this is one of the more profitable series I've done. I don't ever remember having so little land and and making this kind of money on a on a regular basis off such little land we've we've always ended up making good money a lot of the time but, but never quite like this uh this is more than enough to keep us afloat keep us bringing in stuff that we want uh, as i said i think i'd very much like to get that herbis dump trailer if that's still there and we'll probably have a look at the end of this because that would go really well with our combine uh, i know we've got a, i know we've got a really good trailer already a trailer i quite like i'm not a huge fan of it not tipping when i come to tip the uh, tip the actual grain out of it so i'm still of two minds about whether to actually get it uh it would tip about the same amount from our silo it's one of those things where I think I've talked myself into and out of getting that trailer multiple times so far. Uh, what we will have a look at today, though, as I said, is our bakery and maybe get that in place. Uh, with the money we've got, we should be able to place that. We might be even able 
to start getting some animals uh, on here too, uh, I think. Uh, the other thing we might try and do today is if we got a load of digestate from the stuff that we're processing at the moment, the silage we're processing at the moment, might be a really good idea to get that on the grass fields and get those as fertilized as we're going to be able to. Because, yeah, we're not going to be able to get two stages fertilized on them, unfortunately. Uh, but we should be able to get at least one. And with this row done, I'm going to go around the field a couple of times just to catch all of the uh, bits we miss as we do the turn. Should work fairly easily for that. Uh, get the little bit of stones that we missed there. Take this up here. Uh, nothing missed on this side. Um, but we should be able to go down the far end. Oh, in fact, yeah, I'm going to have to go round this end again. And we'll finish in, we'll finish in that top corner, I think. Basically where I'm looking to end up, which isn't too bad. And yeah, this is my four combine or yeah, my, my three combine headlands fit rather nicely into how I'm doing this. And then bring this here and this will be my last headland and we'll finish up back in that bottom corner. There we go. Everything done and dusted and our money is actually picked over to 62,853 just from that single run of silage off those two fields uh, that is excellent that is absolutely brilliant we've got our uh, wheat in as well so i'm very happy with that so back to the yard and uh, we'll see what else we can do today because we're in a position where we can so we're still processing flour out of here let's have a look at what we can purchase with this 62,000. From a production side of things, I have added in a couple of mods. I got a couple of bakery ones. Lots of comments saying, oh, use the uh, use the mods of the mod hub and, and not necessarily the base game ones. So we got these two bakeries here. We've got a 30,000, which will, wow, which has quite a lot of um which is quite useful uh we need to have access to the back of it we don't need access to the front of it though uh or other than to put that stuff but that wasn't the one i was after the one that i wanted to use is this this i think looks nicely rustic and should work quite well don't know where the actual inputs and outputs of this one are though i don't know if they're inside or outside so we might have a, a bit of fun with it uh we can put it if i need access to the back of this i'm gonna have a problem i think we can possibly put this down here in the tree line yeah that would go right there this is fifty thousand. is the only problem so this is going to take up most of our cash uh, i do think it fits so much better with what we have here though so i am gonna grab this how much actually is the pancake factory because we don't need a huge amount pancake production is fifty thousand. Oh, that might be a better way to go actually Oh, I don't know. I don't know if I can uh, trust to do that straight off like that. What do I need access to? Uh, front. Do I need access to the back? I need access to the back to tip. But we need. To, we're gonna need milk, butter, and uh, eggs. So let let's hold off on the pancakes for now. Let's have a look in the animals. We need a small cow pasture, so I'm going to have to go and find one of those. But sh uh, chicken pastures for 5,000, that holds 100, that holds 40, and that holds 80. 
I don't know if we can get the chickens running straight off. Oh, does this match the one that's over here at all? Cost to demolish the existing chicken coop is 1080. So, yes, we will do that. And then we have to remove the fence around it as well. That's quite good. I, I quite like that. We have to defense the whole thing. I think that's got it all. We'll then put a chicken coop in. And yeah, I'm going to go with this one for 5,000. Are we overlapping with the fence? Do we have fence over there? No, but we do have these little bits and pieces. So uh, we'll have to see if we can delete those separately as well. Those are not separately deletable. So I'm going to have to just place over the top. So we'll go V and place it right over the top like so. Be nice if I got rid of those old bits and pieces uh, when it did that. And then we can buy some chickens. So let's go with... We can put 60 in here for 3,000. So I'm going to buy that. Yes. Okay. And then what I want to do is in our productions here, do we have any sorghum left? We still have 4,500 litres of sorghum. So we will stop that. We'll deactivate that. Uh, we can then go and grab our David Brown and give the chickens some feed. And uh, and that should keep them going for a while, I think. Which is why it's useful having the sorghum about. Yes, we're not going to max out the amount of flour we get from the sorghum. Uh, but we already know pretty much we've, we've got more flour out of that sorghum than we got out of the oats amazingly and it had a higher yield as well what i can do here is just put the remaining sorghum into this like so and we can use this to feed the chickens and get the chickens running i don't know if they need water in this uh they might do so we might have to sort that as well we still have fifty thousand left the so back this up to the chicken coop and it will take the sorghum. Fantastic. How much of it will it take? It will take all of it. So that works fairly well for us. That will give us a load of eggs. Uh, now all we need to do is uh, sort out some cows so that we can have some milk. And we can have some butter. So now we've got the chickens in, we might as well go the whole hog and get the cows as well. Uh, we've got this cow barn here. I really quite like this. Uh, I think this would fit in fairly well here. If I could get it to sit in this space. Is that a good place for this? I think that might be a good place for this. What I need to go and do is move some of the equipment out of the way first. So let's just move that. I think I know a better place to put this equipment. So I'm going to go and place that over there. If I could place it further back, I'd like to, but it would get blocked its entrance uh, by uh, the chickens. So... We'll move this stuff out of the way. There's plenty of space down this corner to do this. We can make more money, actually, by selling off the manure that we've got in this corner as well. So there's still there's still a lot of ways in which we can make more cash around here to, uh, to help fund this lot even further. And that's the last one there. Disconnect that, move this out the way, and then we can go and see if this cow barn will actually fit in this space. Will it actually fit here? Will it let me do it? Or is it going to be like last time where we're going to have to... I think we're going to have to place this with V again. I think it's these wires. I think it's the electricity wires that interfere. Uh, 
they they seem to be at a place where it would cause a problem and we'll press v because it's not going to place it otherwise and down it goes we do have a little bit of an oddity here and i think we'll just clean that up quickly so landscape painting and i want grass yeah just a little bit of that in this corner here that works like that and then uh a little bit of that along here like so just to square things up looking nice we need to get some cows in here as well uh so i think so animals that are healthy and older than 18 months can be produced so we're only going to really start producing milk at 18 months so we'll start with just uh five cows producing a little bit of milk for us uh, in fact, let's take this up to 10,000. That will be about perfect. Uh, that is, there we go, 9,900. That is six cows. We will buy those and get them delivered. That's uh, six cows starting us off as well. We're going to have to get a little bit of feed for them. Once they start producing milk, we can buy the dairy. And uh, we might be able to even put... I wonder, actually, we do have the dairy on here. So I think if I get... If I got that, will that fit? Oh, wow. Yeah, we can we can place the dairy right there. In fact, in fact, that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to place this right now. It's 10,000. That will leave us with 8,000. So again, V and down. So dairy there sitting right in front of our uh right in front of our cow shed. And yeah, that is a nice compact little area. I love that. Uh, that is gonna do us really well. So the only thing we still need to buy then is the pancake factory. And that is what we'll be aiming for, is to get the pancake factory in. Uh, to start making some pancakes and making some money from that. Uh, we've not gone. I wasn't going to go down the animal route. And we're not going down the animal animal route massively. Um, just enough to get us started uh, with the ingredients we're going to need to make pancakes. I want to make pancakes and we've now got ourselves nicely set up at the end of this year to do just that there is one more job i need to do today and that is hooking this up to our slurry spreader and getting some uh digestate done on our grass fields so i'm gonna do that uh, there's not really an awful lot else to get done here today. So, as this is something we've done a fair amount before, I'll get this done off camera ready for next time. Uh, we're also going to have to sort out some feed for our cows. So, uh, we will sort that out next time as well, I think. So, I'm going to start off with getting the fields cut. Uh, there's quite a bit that we can turn around. In fact, we can turn around things fairly quickly today because we're not going to be doing anything on any of our arable fields like we were last time. So plan today is to get the mowing done, cut both of the fields. Uh, they're not going to yield anywhere near as high as it did last time. We will have a look at exactly how much grass we get in. Uh, but we made 118,000 litres of the silage off these fields last time. I will be amazed if we make more than a third of that. Uh, based on the fact that we've only got one set of fertilizer onto these fields so we've only got one stage of fertilization and we also only managed to get uh one uh one full month's worth of growth growth we had a decent growth with the last lot uh but really to get the most out of these we need to get a full two month growth out of it 
I also think we need to be rolling this field. So we might see if we can reconfigure our roller today to get these fields rolled as well. Uh, especially if we can clear everything up. I think we might get Follow Me running with our other tractor, with our MB track, uh, with the forage wagon, and do the rowing with this. Uh, that will get everything done quicker and should allow us to get some uh, rolling done on here today. I think it's also fairly inevitable now that we need to get a proper front loader on this tractor. We've got a David Brown front loader. It's cheaper than that rear mounted one that we've been using. Uh, but I think it's going to get harder as we go on to keep using that rear mounted one. I've been umming and erring about getting rid of uh, the rear mounted one we've got here for a while. And it's just got to the point now where I, I think we need to do it, uh, where it's going to make our lives a lot easier doing that, especially if we're now dealing with things like pallets of eggs and things like that. I'm just going to nip back along the field slightly, clear this up. I did cut this from the last time that I did this. I went all the way around this tree especially. And actually, I just needed to do a really simple cut like that to clean things up. So uh, it didn't make much sense to be faffing around that tree when I could uh, very easily just clean things up like that. So uh, we're going to cut this, get this done. I'm not going to spend too long in today's video covering the cutting of this field because we've only just done it recently. Uh, we might do the follow me a little bit more, but today very much I want to get on to that next stage, get us into December with a decent amount of money so we can finish the upgrades to the farm and finally, well, with any luck, make some pancakes, uh, make some money as we're making some pancakes and uh, and go from there. But we're, we're going to need a decent amount of money in the bank from this. And I, I don't know if we're going to hit that from uh, just this cut of grass. We'll see how it goes. Something I do like is now that I'm running this tractor on the mower myself, uh, we're able to open the middle of this field up, divide it as we did in the past. And it's it's looking really nice. The, the yield does not seem horrible at the moment. I think it is going to be less, as I said earlier, than before. In fact, we jump out of here. Gro Groat is ready to harvest. Yield bonus is actually pretty decent we've got a 98 percent yield bonus on here which makes me question exactly how uh how well fertilized this field is do you know what i do not need to roll this field i could roll it and do two lots of fertilization but i do not need to roll this field after cutting it goes it treats it almost as mulching i think no, that field is not mulched, but yeah. Wow, we have... We put the slurry on here, and it's been enough to sort this field out. I don't think we need to roll this after we've done it, other than possibly as a means of saving ourselves the digestate and uh, and having the digestate for our other fields. Uh, but yeah. We, we honestly don't need it. I'm actually a little bit more surprised. Oh, actually, I'm not. I was going to say I'm a little bit more surprised by the fact that uh, we need to fertilize the sorghum field. Um, but actually, that doesn't surprise me. Uh, and if we've got any digestate left over, it might be worth just running over that sorghum field before it gets any more grown. That way, we can uh, top up using the digestate that field and not spend any expensive money on fertilizer. That is the first field finished. Not too bad timing. It's 20 to 11 in the morning, so it's taken us a little while. This one should take us a little bit less time, uh, but it's, it's working pretty well. We have a decent amount off there. Of course, we've got much more fertilization than I thought we... Uh, we're going to have. So that on its own is uh, as absolutely fantastic as well. Uh, so we, we're going to get a decent yield off this. We might even get sort of half 
uh, as much as we got last time. So to do that, we're looking at about 60,000 litres of silage out of here. Uh, once we uh, get this all cut and into our silo, uh, that would be great. That would give us uh, a good 30 odd thousand in the bank. Unfortunately, I don't think that's going to be enough for us to actually do what we want to do. Uh, to get the pancake factory, that is going to cost 50,000. And yeah, we do not have that amount of money kicking around. We could sell a bit of flour uh, and we could sell a bit of milk and, uh, and everything. So there, there are options for us to raise a bit of extra cash. Um, but I think it's it's going to be tight and it's going to be difficult to do. Final row of grass. And yeah, this has gone pretty similar to our previous cuts. Uh, fairly easy to do. Really good piece of equipment. We've used about, well, nearly two thirds of a tank of fuel in this tractor uh certainly more than half and it's it seems to be running fairly well on the whole thing uh the tractor itself is in good repair so it's not going to use too much fuel too quickly um but yeah there we go that is the entire field cut and we can head back to the yard so i am uh, i'm very very pleased with this that we have that level of fertilization on here is really going to boost this. I am intrigued to see the difference, though, between cutting after two months and cutting after three. Uh, we, we're expecting a lower yield overall because of that. But uh, I I don't know with, with what we've got set up on here, with that 98% uh, yield boost, whether it's going to make that much difference. We'll drop this on on the grass over here patch all of that uh we will hook up to our wind rower which is sitting there it does tend to hop about a bit when i disconnect it and this one is hopping about a little bit but i think we're good yep there we go so we'll bring this out here and then we'll grab the mb track in fact i am just gonna curl this round I don't think we'll use up the fuel, but it uh, always pays to refill after a job like that. There we go. And then we'll grab our MB track, put this on the forage wagon, and that will uh, that will follow behind us, and uh, we can get this job done a lot quicker. It's only quarter past 12, which is good. I'm very pleased that uh, we seem to be making very good progress today. Of course, every so often we're going to have to just keep an eye on this, keep an eye on when it actually fills up and uh, and head off the field to tip it. Uh, it's going to disjoint this a little bit, uh, but I think it's going to be worth it overall. Let's reverse this up into a position where follow me can go and just pull forward a little bit. Uh, we'll then jump in here and hit the follow me, not the TLX, the David Brown. There it goes. We could feed the cows some of the grass, but I think the amount of money we end up making overall, it's, it's probably worth walking out a little bit for some TMR. So uh, that's what I'm going to do. We're not creating any hay on here because we lose too much money with that not going all the way through our uh, through our system. So, um, yeah, we, I, I think we might as well just get all of this through our processors and buy the TMR for the cows, because that will increase the milk output as well. So the whole thing just makes more sense to do it that way. Right, I want to unfold this. Down it goes. Pull it forward a little bit. Yep, like that. That will bring our Mercedes into here. We'll take the hide worker off. We'll start up the 
forage wagon. Oh, unfolds the forage wagon, sorry. Then starts up the forage wagon. Bring it in here. Start that going. Yep, like so. And then follow that. We can jump back in this. And away we go. And we'll see how long it takes our forage wagon to fill up from this. I'm hoping we're going to get lots of loads off this field. I'm fairly sure we didn't make it the whole way around the field last time. There we go. He's oh, that is perfect timing for that. So, yeah, the follower stops the moment it's full which is great and yeah that is once around the field so i think we're only gonna end up with two no i think we might end up with as many as four loads off here uh so that that would be a decent amount and about what i'm expecting that would be six loads in total uh yeah which is which is about right might end up being about 80 odd thousand liters of silage from that and that would equate to uh around about 60 thousand liters of electricity in total uh and if we hit that uh that's about thirty thousand pounds so yeah that is what i'm expecting is that we're going to hit thirty thousand pounds if we do that uh, we might end up putting the bakery in. We've got a bakery for 30,000. Uh, we can make bread and make the most of our stuff from that. Uh, but I still want to make pancakes. So, yeah, if I can find 20,000 from somewhere, I think I'll try. This is our third load of of the field and um yeah so that's thirty-nine thousand liters i think we're gonna pass forty thousand liters on this field i think overall we're gonna be pushed though to to hit the 80 i was talking about earlier there's no way there's there's forty thousand liters on the other field so uh it's probably gonna be about 60 so yeah it's uh it's it's definitely a lower amount and we we want to be cutting after three months each time if we can uh if we can mulch over the winter and get that extra two percent yield off uh that's gonna help us as well i think if i have a not full trailer left at the end i will probably tip that in to the cows just to get the cows going and producing some milk we only have six cows uh they're not going to be doing very much but uh if i can hold on to a bit of cash at the moment i think that's going to be a wise idea it's it's a difficult one i know that putting this grass through our processes is going to make us quite a bit of money um but i also know i need to get these cows started and moving we're just clearing off the last few bits of grass from this field. Uh, take it up to the top end here so that we row the rest of this up and get it collected. It's not been too bad. Uh, we are verging on 70,000 litres, I think. Pick this up and fold it. Uh, we'll go and have a look at exactly how much we have got in our forage wagon. So, uh, yeah, another 5,169 litres. Take the hide worker off this so that we can just pull it up to the end. Uh, lift the pickup and turn it off. And then we will follow the David Brown back to the farm. Uh, I think we had 60... 4,000 litres in there, so I think we're just shy of 70,000 litres in total. MB track wasn't following, so we'll make sure that it is this time. There we go. And now we can get these both back to the yard. I'm pleased with that. It's three in the afternoon. We are going to go and sort some feed for the cows. I, I'm 
been umming and erring the whole time while I've been doing this job. Trying to, to figure out which is the best way to go. I think we're just going to make more money per thousand liters. Uh, taking, uh, processing this grass uh, than we are putting it through the cows. I, th I think we'll end up losing money doing it that way. So I want to get the rest of the grass that's in the forage wagon in. We'll see how much there is. Uh, we'll start it processing. And I think what we'll do today actually is also get this distributing straight into our BGA as well. Uh, that way we won't have to do what we did last time and transfer it all across. Uh, there's no point in, in continually doing that. That's a lot of repetition and, uh, and we can avoid that. So we'll go straight into distribution with that. We're going to be doing a lot of moving stuff around this yard anyway uh, going forwards because we've got to move the eggs and we've got to move the milk uh, when we eventually get somewhere to process those. So into here and that off there we go right so with those done let's head down the side here and have a look in here so grass silage we have got seventy thousand liters of grass absolutely fantastic uh that will take us slightly less in silage i think uh based on what we had before so we will activate that uh, i'm then gonna change the output mode of this to distributing so that should then automatically be going into here i hope uh we'll see it, sh it should do that every so often at the moment it's uh it's just sticking in there so hopefully that's going to go straight into our bga after a while if it doesn't we'll have to move it across manually um, but we'll keep an eye on that. And yeah, that should give us a decent amount going across here. But I just say we only have 6,000 litres. So I don't know if that will be enough to uh, to do the stuff that we want to do with that. So what I'm going to do now is go park the MB track up in the shed. We'll leave this here. And we're going to take the David Brown down to the shop with that front loader attachment that we had uh, with the truck. And I want to get a front loader on this with a bag lifter and probably a weight on the back. And then we can have the truck bring a couple of bags of feed back for the cows, TMR feed for the cows which I don't think will cost us too much. And with only six cows, should last us a couple of days at just those couple of bags. So detach that. Uh, lift this up. And we'll go and find our truck. We'll get the truck following behind the DB as we head up to the shop and, uh, and get this refit finally with the front loader. Uh, but we're now doing too much front loader stuff really ignore the fact that we need to have a front loader on this tractor and it's uh it's just become a bit too much of a necessity i think uh to ignore any further so our convoy has made it up to the shop what i'm gonna do is take this around the side sell off the front loader and reconfigure the tractor so bring this round here like that where's my truck there's my truck so we'll take the hide worker off this because this is just going to fit over here and i think we're gonna have to try and get a flatbed on this i think we're gonna end up with too much although our trailer actually also does a uh, can be converted to a flatbed so we might do that as well so into here, back lifter, we will repaint it, yes, we'll repair it, yes, and then we can sell it for 4,131, absolutely brilliant. So yes, we want to sell that. The David Brown, uh, we want to customize, 
and we should be able to a put the weight on that which we already had so that's not going to cost us anything but uh we should be able to also add oh hang on do we have to do yeah there we go front loader so we lose the front weights to get the front loader on so that's something we'll look to configure at home isn't going to cost us anything to put the front loader on which is fantastic so customize that yes okay and then we'll bring this round the front of the shop so that we can grab ourselves a front loader and probably a weight as well i think so over to here and we want a front loader which are here and we have a specific david brown one so this is uh yeah the case david brown one but we will buy that for two thousand that's perfect to go with that i also want a quickie bag lifter okay we want a couple of big bags of tmr what's the difference between that and that oh that's 1200 liters that is um that just basically does yeah that's basically just double the price right so we will buy one of these that's we'll buy two of these we'll get two of these in our trailer hopefully that'll be fine uh, that is going to be fairly weighty, though. So to offset that, we want to get a good weight for our tractor. How heavy is that barrel weight? Oh, I think this kind of fits in with... Hopefully, at 800 pounds, that will be fine. But we'll see how this all goes together. So tractor up front. Get that in to our here. Connect it up. Looking great so far. Actually, that doesn't look bad on the front of this. That looks really nice. Uh, so this on next. We want to grab the weight on the back. Uh, because, yeah, we are going to need the weight on the back. So that's the barrel weight. Lift that. And then this should be enough for us to load this up. We may have to leave the barrel weight down here at the shop if we're going to be doing lots of loading up or a barrel weight down here at the shop. That's not too bad if it is only £800 to do that. And the great thing about the bag lifter is that this will reach fairly far forwards into our truck without having to worry too much yeah so that bag will go there like so yeah there we are and then the second one will do the same I like the look of this setup on the david brown why have i been holding off on this for so long that is just that looks really cool just line this up and get this in here drop the bag off and there we are that is brilliant i'm very very pleased with this the farm is growing nicely and i think we're gonna hit our target pretty well with any luck so i jump in here close the back up follow the db and we'll head back down to the farm and get the cows fed. Back down at the yard and just going to position ourselves here so that we can easily get these unloaded. Come on, drop back down. There we are. Uh, unclip everything and open up the cow shed. So this should just pour straight into here. Uh, especially if we've got this at the right angle i'm hoping 2400 liters is going to be enough to keep the cows going for a while uh we'll see where it leaves us probably in uh a bit i, I what i'm gonna do is we're going to see where we are with december try and get ourselves set up for the winter and then we'll jump forwards to springtime and see where we stand. Get in the spring uh, sorghum. 
and then get uh, get everything sorted bring like that and then uh, yeah we'll probably skip through the year fairly quickly next year especially if we can get stuff processing automatically through our silo and bga we've been doing a bit of testing at the end of this year and i think we want to sort of turn everything on turn the distribution on and get everything moving next year this has got all of the tmr in though and that is all set that sets up our cows our chickens are already using the sorghum we gave them last time to start producing some eggs so we've already got uh 394 eggs which is fantastic um we have no milk in here yet but we now have a, a good amount of feed for our cows in fact yeah that should that should get them going and uh, and keep them going for a bit we will monitor that overnight and see where that is uh we have all the silage moved across uh which is great so our total amount of silage is sixty six thousand seven hundred and ninety four let's deactivate this so distributing this is great so next time we will turn this on uh we will turn on the uh this as well and basically we'll tip the grass silage in it'll distribute to the mini bga and then process it from there we are going to process this overnight though to see how much money we are left with so we managed to raise thirty nine thousand eight hundred and six from the silage yesterday not a bad total really uh, but what i'm gonna have to do is customize this trailer we want to go and deliver six pallets of flour i think so we're gonna go with the bale trailer set up on here that should be about right uh then we can hook this back up to david brown and this is part of the reason why I got the fort on the front of here last time. Uh, it gives us the flexibility to be able to take this trailer. We've got to sell this flower down at the train station. So it's it's going to have to be loaded onto here and possibly unloaded at the other end. So we've got plenty of flour. Uh, we have got some uh, eggs started. Uh, we've got a little bit of milk, so we should be able to start creating those today. And uh, and doing pancakes is something I've wanted to do for a while. And having the opportunity to do it here without too much problem uh, is, uh, is absolutely brilliant. And uh, we might even try and buy some of the maple syrup from the shop to do that. Or maybe that's something we should look into doing as we go into the second year uh improving our pancakes by getting some uh some maple syrup production on here there is a mod to do it so uh let us know in the comments do you think we should uh, have a go at doing some uh, maple syrup i do wonder if i can pick up two of these at the same time on here certainly this tractor can handle a thousand liters i don't know if it can handle two thousand wow that is having no issue whatsoever with this uh, I actually can't believe I put off putting the front loader on this tractor for so long. Uh, it actually works really, really well. Uh, all in all, though, that has gone on there pretty easily. And I'm very, very happy with that. Shouldn't have any problem hooking up the trailer. We've had heavier loads on the back of here. Uh, right, we are going to head down to the train yard. We've got somewhere up there to sell there's a sell point up there that we take these and uh, i think the price is about 1700 pound per thousand liters at the moment so yeah we're gonna get a pretty good price for these as well yeah where exactly is this going to sell i'm not 100 percent sure oh hang on what have we got here we've got flour and stuff here all right and we'll start unloading these from the back first unclip all of these get this loaded onto here and onto the train
is 1700 uh, yeah 1769 uh not quite best price but not far off i don't want to leave it any longer um because we will have a little bit of cost overnight and, and basically it will make no difference so load these in like that Oh, look at that in 43,338. So, yeah, this is going to send us over. Final lot. There we go. 49,000. Our target is 50,000. So, uh, let's connect this back up. And we can head down to the farm and we can get our pancake factory and get all of our current stuff loaded up i'm gonna set everything to distribute once we got the factory set up so that should then distribute into that straight away so there we go that is the flower that we needed to sell sold we've got fifty thousand pounds in the bank uh, and i think we got enough space around here ish to place our pancake factory uh, we're gonna have to again we're we're hitting objects uh, that are on the ground so i'm going to just place it straight down like so there we go rocky's pancake place a uh, fresh pancakes premium syrup and that is fantastic so we need to get things loaded up now making pancakes uh, we can either make pancakes or pancakes with maple syrup. Uh, yeah, we have pancakes. Um, they don't sell for a massive amount more. So uh, we will start with just uh, doing that. Oh, pancake productions is the only place buying pancakes. So we're going to have to put in a sell point for them as well. Looking at the selling point, pancake production mod. There we go. Uh, it is a hundred... To, uh, to put in a selling point so i think we will probably uh maybe try and put that then we might go and put that somewhere at the top let's go find a cafe so up here at the farmer's market we've got a few sell points uh that we could tag this along with we've got the dairy up here um, we've got, yeah, we've got the main farmer's market. Let's put it up here then. And we actually have a little bit of space there. We've got a little bit of space in the middle here. I don't suppose, oh, wow. Yeah, we could add it to the existing sell point there. Um, or we could put it down the side here. I think, uh, maybe, maybe down the side here would be the best place. Or on the, on the end here. That's where I'm going to put it. We will put our pancake sell point right here. There we go. And now that means we can get things running. So let's have a look in our productions in general. I am going to get uh, this here automatically changing to distributing. Uh, so that will go where it needs to. And yep, that's all good. Only flour is what we're putting through there. So that's that's the only way that's going. I don't think, though, we can automatically distribute milk and eggs. Yeah, we can't automatically distribute them from our chickens and our cows. So what we need to do now is load up the flour that we've got. And then... Uh, we're going to have to load up the eggs once we get a full pallet. We're nowhere near there yet. And load up the milk into the dairy. So we, we're we not going to have to go very far at all. Yeah, we've, we've got no way of getting that to automatically fill with this. Yeah, no way at all. Uh, we need to do a little bit of butter. Um, we're probably going to have to sell some more of this flour because at the moment we have no means of transporting the milk at all. Let's have a look at what we have in the way of milk transport. I think we have a, a very affordable little milk trailer here. 
Holds 2,000 litres, costs 500 pounds. We could sell a single thing of flour. Yeah, that is that is the one bit of kit we lack and that we need. Thankfully, as none of the area we're working here on the Western Wild is a main road, uh, we are able to just take this down here on the front of the forks. So that was another 1,780 that we got from that. Perfect. Uh, let's head up to the shop then and uh, we'll go and get that little milk tanker because we're not producing a huge amount of milk and we can start getting some butter processed up to the shop let's just park this here by the door jump out and grab ourselves that trailer so in here yeah lizard water milk trailer this this is the first time where i've had a map where this is just basically all i need two thousand liters nice little tow behind trailer uh we will buy that for 500 so that's absolutely perfect for here while i'm up here i'm just gonna check how our cows are doing. cows have eaten through wow quite a lot of feed uh in the in just that day how much is a couple more big bags of tmr gonna be oh it's more than we can afford that's a little bit concerning we could buy one big bag of tmr keep them going and we bought one of these two of these last time i think my big worry is that this should be our ma our major income time for the farm and it looks like we're gonna be pushing it to make stuff look at that up the top again that really shouldn't be that kind of uh shouldn't be that kind of link it'll be fine for this it's uh, it's not horrendous, but um, I think I might have to get a 3.1 if uh, if I'm going to do this because it's just it's a little bit odd. I have this horrible feeling that I might try tried to run before I can walk. We do not have anywhere near the amount of milk uh, or eggs. I think that I would probably have expected to have here but line this up and oh are you gonna let me unload this i oh, don't know no, we've not connected up oh no why can't i connect up the power line right let's detach that let's uh, take this out connect this up this definitely has uh, an electrical connection which that didn't and sometimes things get a little bit finicky. Have that. Connect that up there and connect that there. Will that now let me empty? Is that in the right place? Yeah, there we go. Overload the milk. Yeah, we've got 446 litres of milk. Let's turn on the butter production and change the output mode to distribute. And that then starts getting some milk into our pancake factory. What I want to do now, though, uh, with about half the day left, we can spend some time getting ahead on our field work so that we can then sort of skip forward to about March time for our next video. And uh, I'm going to go and plow our remaining field and get that out of the way i did ask in the comments how is this done how would this be done in real life with a non-reversible plow um and thank you for the comments that came back and uh, and told me what i was doing wrong and uh, and how this would work and basically what you do is you pick a point in the field uh, and you work your way out from it so you end up with just a single ridge in the middle of the field and that is where you go this tractor really does not like this let's go into low gear and right down yeah it doesn't want to go more than 
three miles an hour with this plow. Never seen a tractor struggle so much with an implement like this. I think we're going to have to use the David Brown. So let's try this again. Line ourselves up. See if we can't get back into the furrows of the last attempt. Yep, like that. Uh, try and keep on a nice straight line. And yeah, as I said, we're going to work our way out from the center of the fields to the edges. Uh, thereby just keeping a single ridge uh, in the middle of the field and, uh, and letting the rest of the field just work its way out fairly well. Amazing how much better this tractor is at doing this job than that MV track. I would not have put money on that at all. That is just so much better at slicing through the ground with this plow than that is. I don't know what it is with this plow. I'm at some point i'm gonna have to do a test and try and see uh, what's causing this issue with the mv track whether it is just this plow or whether it's plows in general that it has an issue with this is so much easier doing this way i can line things up really well i can get uh, around the field really well and yeah i've always got a wheel in the uh, in the groove in the actual cut and uh yeah keeps everything nice and straight as well look at the line going down that field that is just absolutely amazing i think if you're doing this year after year what you do is you'd work out from the middle one year and then the next year to make sure the soil stays moving and doesn't just lump up in one place you'd end up doing from the outside in uh working it the other way uh the following year just to make sure that you don't end up uh shifting all of the earth to be this massive pile in the middle and uh instead just keep moving the earth around uh, on the field would make a lot of sense to me and i'm barely sure i've heard somebody say that to me before with how this would work uh it is still pulling through here quite nicely we don't use even as much fuel uh doing this as as we did with the the forage wagon or the uh, mower and uh, on here either it's it just seems to be this tractor is really well set up for this job as opposed to those other two um it is doing some beautiful work and uh, and i as i've said many times before i do enjoy using this david brown on here uh, it is a nicely built mod and we're a good i would say two thirds of the way through the field now so this will definitely get done today and we'll be ready for seeding as soon as the sorghum can go in the ground. Taking quite a while to get round the field and uh, and get to each side. Now, this is what I was saying earlier. I think on a on a larger field, you'd end up creating a couple of ridges. Uh, that would make more sense to me. Uh, at the moment, we're getting to the end here and I'm going up a few gears and then going around the end. It takes, yeah, it definitely takes longer and we'd be using up more fuel that way. So up to third, down to the end so that we can pick up here as well. And down here and away we go again. And that then uh, is pretty much how it's working. It is working well, and I'm enjoying doing it this way. As I've said many times uh, while doing this job, I find plowing so relaxing. And it's it's been a fairly bright, sunny day. I'm expecting it to get colder over the next few days on the farm. So that would be another reason for sort of shutting things down. We can't do much else over the winter months. Somebody did mention in the comments uh, that uh, I should have planted oilseed radish in here. And they're right. I completely forgot and completely blanked my mind 
the oilseed radish would have been a great crop to put in here we could have done that and then come uh, sort of march time we could have plowed that in ready for an april uh, planting of the sorghum and there would have been absolutely plenty of time to do it so uh yeah I, in future and in future series i will keep an eye on that especially if i'm doing sorghum uh, sorghum is such a late planting crop that having a direct seeder and just throwing a load of uh, oilseed radish in until you're ready to plant the sorghum in the new year is definitely the best way to go get rid of that uh, extra or, or, or reduce your costs on fertilizer because it costs you far less in seed than it will in fertilizer to do that and uh, yeah give yourself a boost as you uh, you come to do the crop the next year we've come to the edge of the field and that means that we need to start looking at getting the headlands done we have an edge row on the other side to get done so we should be able to do this headland uh, fairly well i'm gonna pull this about as far out as i can into this corner uh, which should make things easier for us overall and then we're going to turn this uh, trying to think of the best way to do this in fact yeah the best way to do this is the same way as we've been doing the whole field uh, i think we'll probably end up with a ridge somewhere in here if we were doing this uh in real life not quite sure what the best way to do it would be so i'm gonna stick to the edge here then into the field and then yeah we'll probably end up with creating a couple of ridges of the ridge i think i think what you do in real life is try and minimize exactly how much of the headland you had to do in order to uh to minimize how much ridge uh, you created the other way would be that uh, you go around doing the headlands as you do the last few rows so that it sort of squares things off. That would be another possibility. Uh, it's not going too bad. I think this is probably the least realistic uh, way that I've done this last bit. But we are cleaning up the field and, uh, and it should all look pretty good by the end of it. Uh, just the other headland to do after we finish this end and then we can head back to the farm because it's december and the sun is already setting up to the end of the field last little bit and there we go that is everything plowed and ready to go in the new year so i'm very happy with that i think we're gonna have to go though and sell a little bit more of the flour before we finish because things are not working as i'd hoped and uh yeah it's the only way we're going to be able to make sure that our cows have enough feeds to get into the new year i think we're going to need about ten thousand pounds worth of feed for the cows to get through the next couple of months so what i'm gonna do is sell off probably another six of these we'll get in here we know we can grab two at a time and yeah that will leave us with uh eight so that'll be eight of these we have enough butter now to do uh three thousand liters of flowers to flour to pancakes so uh, at this point we are still quite a way off that uh we need 30 liters of milk i think no 50 liters of milk so milk is the big thing we need uh 30 flour three butter and six eggs so we need uh quite a bit of milk so keeping the cows producing milk over the next few months uh, is going to be absolutely crucial and this is the thing our cows uh, should be absolutely fine creating milk uh, over that time we know we'll we'll create a decent amount over the next few months and try and get that in and then it's just eggs and flour which will have plenty of that uh, with uh, 
well, eight, 8,000 litres is more than enough to start creating some pancakes. And yeah, so selling these six isn't going to harm us that much. Uh, and then in the new year, what we'll do is we'll probably try and set ourselves up with a bakery once we've got the money in from the first kind of silage in about May, June time. We'll try and set up with a new bakery, try and start getting some bread done as well. I kind of feel that should have been the way I've gone this year. We would have made more money at the end of the year had I done that. But you live and learn, and so uh, we're going to make the best of this. We're going to sell some more of our flour and uh, get some feed for our cows. That is nowhere near as clean a pile of pallets on here as we had last time. Um, but it has done the job and got the pallets up to here. So I'm just going to pull this as we did before up at sort of 90 degrees. So it's easy for me to get them unloaded. Take that off. Undo all of our straps. So that we can start unloading and again we'll unload from the back uh that has uh well really serves two purposes unloading from the back uh first is that it keeps the trailer nice and stable and uh, because we have the wood at the front and we're then taking the weight off the bit that's sort of pushing down on the back means the trailer won't suddenly tip up uh, but also because we've got the bit at the front with the uh, the front of the trailer sitting there uh, means we don't end up with uh, trying to, to pull it from a, a, a tight space there so works out well for us there uh, 3700 we are earning more now in fact have we hit best price for the flower oh we're just under so this is actually a really good time for us to sell uh, this flower to get some extra money in. Uh, we'll easily be over the 10,000 we need. And I'll be able to go over to the shop, grab some big bags, and, uh, and we'll be able to keep our cows fed for the next uh, three, four months until we uh we get into the new year um and then we should have enough milk to start producing some pancakes and start making some money off those so uh all looking up at this point i'm very pleased with where we are just need to head up to the shop quickly and grab ourselves some feed for the cows i've just realized on my way up here that for the same amount of money that I'm about to spend on big bags of TMR, I think I can buy a mixer and enough bales to fill it. If we have a look in here, a couple of round hay bales is only going to be two grand. A couple of round silage bales is only going to be uh, just under six grand. And a feed mixer if we go for this Falky here, is only going to be six grand. We would have enough money to do that. And at two and a half thousand litres, that is going to be absolutely fine. We'd have to do it a few times. Everything else here is a little bit above our price range. But that little Falky mixer, that's going to be perfect. So uh, I am going to put the Trelleborg tyres on it. Uh, I'm going to go with without logo, so it's uh, a little bit unbranded. And we're going to buy that. Uh, just as a comparison before I go and buy the big bags that we were looking to buy, which was this. Uh, for 10 grand, it would give us uh, 4,800 litres. So I want to get here bales. We want two round bales for 1800 yes and two round silage bales uh for 3400 yes and yeah so it's a little bit more than we were looking to spend but 
That is going to make a surprisingly big difference, I think. So, uh, yeah, we're going to have to get these back to the farm. Uh, it's going to take me a couple of trips, and the light, as you can see, has completely gone. So uh, I'm going to get this back to the farm. We will get our cows fed, and, uh, yeah, we'll see where we are in March. Um, but this so much better solution than we had uh, originally planned and yes i am going to use my forks to load this up onto here uh, we are still had to use this trailer up here we still needed to get these transported back this way because there is just no way that we can do it otherwise um, and in future we won't buy silage bales what we'll do is we'll buy some hay bales with the money that we make from the silage and uh, and then we'll just use a little bit of silage from our fermenting silo uh, that is if i can avoid dropping my bales going forwards so as i expected the winter was not too eventful we had a uh, couple of months we've we've moved through january and february uh with with little to do so we we're, we're doing okay uh, the cows, the, the bales fed the cows. Just two of the bales, one silage and one hay bale fed the cows for the whole two months. So we've actually ended up saving money by doing the cows in uh, the way we did, go, going and getting that feeding wagon. Uh, however, I did have a look at this and go, oh, we still need to get a whole load of... Uh, fertilizer on this field here this wheat and on our grass fields and you can see here the state of our fields uh we've got a fair amount to get onto here both of these fields both of the grass fields need doing uh this is where we're going to be doing next time we're going to be going and getting that field planted with the sorghum i'm actually fairly happy to just start this up here if we don't have enough of the digestate to spread on here what isn't connected pto there we go uh if i don't have enough digestate to spread on uh, all of these fields we'll get this wheat field done first uh get this all finished and then we can turn around and roll the two grass fields the grass fields haven't grown yet we are uh, still in the cut state that we were in November. So as a result, we can uh, very easily alter our rollers and get uh, get that done. Uh, it might be that we find uh, that uh, we can't afford that. So yeah, I'm, I'm very wary of exactly how much digestate we have here. We want to get the uh, this wheat done and uh, and get the fertilizing done on here i think we have like thirty thousand liters so we might end up rolling those fields uh which would be very interesting to do gonna have to go and grab a second trailer full of this i think and yep there we go so we'll grab a second trailer and get that done so we're gonna use about ten thousand liters on here that does make me think we are going to be short of digestate to uh, get the grass fields done as well so how much digestate do we still have sitting in here let's refill that and in the meantime we'll have a look at our source and yeah we've got 16,612 left i think that's probably going to be enough to do the smaller of the grass fields so we will have a, a look at our rollers today and see if we can alter them to do grass rolling. And if we can, uh, we'll roll the bigger grass field to make sure that we uh, actually are able to get a, another stage of fertilization on that. I'm quite pleased that I've been able to do this wheat before it's grown up too much. Another day and we would have been destroying crop with these wheels on here. Uh, but that seems to have done enough we've got 12 percent left we have a pretty well covered field i mean we've got a couple of bits that have been missed but it's that's uh, that's going to be negligible in the overall scheme of things 
So let's go and refill this and get this grass field done. And then we can, uh, yeah, see if we can alter the rollers, get some grass rolling uh, barrels on them and, uh, and get them rolled. Up to this field. This is long and thin. I'm hoping very much that we can get a good spread on here. And, uh, yeah, widest spread I can. And then uh, it should only be three trips up and down the field looking at this to get this done. Uh, I don't mind using up the digestate. We're going to be refilling it in a month or so anyway. So plan will be in April to get the sorghum planted. And then in May, we'll be looking at getting the uh, grass cut for the second time. Or for the, well, third time it'll be. Uh, and uh, that will be uh, a really good income because we're going to be doing it for the full three months. We're going to be fully fertilized. Uh, I think we'll still be that 2% short from mulching. I, I really don't know how we can get these fields mulched without losing a stage of fertilization or, or a stage of growth. So, yeah, we're, we're not going to be able to mulch, but we should be able to get it to sort of a 98% bonus either way. This should leave us with about four, 5,000 liters of digestate in the tank, I think. Yep. 5,547 litres. So we are absolutely fine. We will um, be able to finish this field and then we'll move on to doing uh, the other one with the roller. I think it might actually be fairly close as to whether we make it to the end of the field with what we've got on here. We're down to the last 20%. And yeah, it's going to be enough. Good. That is perfect. So that is the field done. Uh, we end up with 7% left in here. So let's go and see if we can reconfigure these rollers and get some grass rollers on them. And uh, we'll use the David Brown for this and, uh, and, and give it a go with that and see if it works. Before I start work with this today, let's just pop here, give it a refill. And, uh, and while we're giving it a refill, let's give it a wash as well. So David Brown is looking a bit mucky. He's been doing a lot of plowing before Christmas, and I should really have uh, gone and uh, given it a wash before we put it away. So it's just been sitting in the shed for the last two months, all mucky and and, and need of a clean. So we'll give it a quick wash down. We're going to go and drop the forks off. We are going to be using those later. So uh, I want to put them somewhere where it's fairly easy for me to uh, pick them up. Uh, so I've been putting everything sort of down here like this. We've only got the manure forks. Is that manure or silage forks? Either way, we've got the, the those forks and we've got the pallet forks. Uh, and that's really the only things we've got for the front of this at the moment. Still haven't cleaned out the uh, excess... Uh, chaff that's at the bottom of our fermenting silo. Uh, on the advisement of a few people, I just sort of left it there. It kind of makes sense. That's a place where that all gets loaded up. And uh, and so, yeah, you kind of expect that stuff to be there. You'd always have a little bit of wastage hanging around. Makes it look a little bit more like a working farm. Right into here. And let's see what configuration options we have for these rollers. So we've got the Cambridge, the Smooth, and the Toothed. I'm going to try the Smooth. I think the Smooth should be a set of grass rollers and, uh, and might work for that. So that is not going to cost us anything. That is absolutely brilliant. So we'll reconfigure those to be uh, grass rollers. Connect all of that up. And we'll go give this a try and see if this works. Uh, if it does, uh, that's really useful. Although we haven't had time to roll our grass fields after cutting them before. Uh, going into the winter like this, perfect opportunity. Give them a roll uh, after the last cut of the year. Uh, if you do the last cut in November, 
uh, you'll get the next cut around May time and, uh, and should fit right in. It means you might end up with one in the middle of harvest, uh, but uh, there, there's always going to be an awkward time for the grass cut. So let's bring this on to here. We will just double check that we're not at the growth stage. No, we're not. That is still sitting at harvested. And so now I will unfold the rollers. I think you're coming down. Yeah. And uh, unrolling this field now should have an effect. Should put it onto growth stage one, which is fine. But the, the thing we are after, uh, the reason why we want to roll this is to give us a stage of fertilization. Uh, finish off the fertilizing. Is that actually doing anything? No, that is doing nothing. So I don't think these rollers are actually making any difference whatsoever. Nope. Right. So, uh, yeah, that unfortunately is not what I hoped they were. Let's fold those up. And uh, I think we might have to have a look and see if there's anything really cheap in the shop we can pick up. Because uh, otherwise, I don't think we have any means of actually fertilizing this field. After a quick search, I think I found a solution. This Una Grudzag U601. Uh, this might do the trick. It's 2,500. We can lease it for less money than we have in the thing. So we will lease that. And it only requires 15 horsepower. So we're off up to the shop. And we're going to go and pick that up. So we're here up at the shop. And there's our roller. I've tried to avoid leasing stuff in this series as much as possible. Only really going for this this time. Simply because uh, we are... Well, so short of money. The fact that we actually managed to get this roller for less than uh, a uh, less than two hundred pound is brilliant, and especially when we only had about two hundred pound in the bank. Um, we uh, we're not going to go very far with this though, fast with this though, because as you can see, it's rolling as we go. So this is going to roll all the grass all the way back, and uh, yeah. I don't think we can deactivate the roller at all. Nope. It is just going to do its thing because it is a roller and uh, and it's going to roll. We've made it down to the field and the road has not been kind to the roller. Look at all the paint loss on the back of that. That's uh, a little bit mad. So, uh, yeah, it's lost a whole load of its paint. Uh, however, it has made it down to the field, and as you can see here, it is actually fertilizing the ground. So that's a great start. We will just double check that. And yep, look at that. We've got a thin blue line going down the side there. So quite a bit of uh, work to go on here. I'm wondering if we can get a hired worker to do this. Uh, although... The tractor I need to do the next set of jobs on the farm is this one. Uh, oh, and we only have 64 pounds. So, no, I don't think we get a hard worker to do this. We need to just plug away at it and get the job done. I've been around the headlands three times, and it's taken a little while with this small roller to, uh, to do that. And you can see it's not massively far across the field uh, doing that. It is having the desired effect, though, and we are... Uh, able to get a good amount of fertilizer down or a fertilizing down uh, what i'm gonna do is just drive across the field like this to try and keep things uh, as well as easy to turn as possible i found in the corners sometimes i end up with with missing a bit so uh, if i can work my way across the field this way and just sort of have a uh, a nice easy turn on each end that will improve things and uh, and and make things go a lot smoother definitely speed things up we have got a fairly good usage of fuel for this uh, i was expecting it to be a bit worse but uh, david brown seems to be handling this fairly well 
Uh, we're running a little bit low on the revs. But if I go down a gear like that, we tend to stick a lot higher. Yeah, in fact, we'll go in second gear here. I thought the revs were ending up redlining, but they're not. So we're actually pretty good. And we can keep working our way across this field and get this all rolled in. So this is the final row on this section of the field. We're going to divide the next section as we have uh, with this bit. But it's all rolled in rather nicely. It's coming up to about midday. So yeah, this job is taking me a decent amount of time to get done with this roller. Has worked well though. Has worked really well. And I'm, I'm very, very pleased with it. We're going to go down this bit here. Try and keep a nice straight line. Uh, of course, i got to take into account that we have this notch in at this point in the field. So we don't want to end up doing too much back and forth dealing with that. Or having to, to roll over somewhere that we've, we've rolled before too much. Because that's just a waste of fuel. Uh, it should work out fairly well, though. That's, uh, that's pretty central, actually. Uh, especially to the far end. So round, and again, we just keep going round until we've got all of this rolled and uh, finish the fertilizing. I think I've got this just about right. We've got one length of field here to go. Uh, I think what we can do is probably fill in that last length uh, there with a, a down and a back up to the top and then just roll down this last section here so we'll go outside here roll this this should leave one roller's width with any luck uh, although i may have gone too far over hopefully i haven't and then there should be enough space down here to turn around and come back and do this section here if we're lucky this section here will be a single roller and it's oh it's not quite i was hoping that was going to work out pretty perfect for us to do the long line and uh, to get back to the the farm but it's not what i'm going to do is we're just going to come down here we'll do a bit of this We'll come back up and do that bit, and then we'll uh, we'll finish off uh, doing this line here, just because it'll be easier to turn around that way. Um, but yeah, misjudged that ever so slightly, and uh, and that should have worked better than that. But we have got this field rolled. We didn't have enough uh, digestate to get it done, and this roller has not cost us a lot of money to do this. I think it's worth hanging on to if we want to in future uh, get the field rolled like this uh, it would work out really well for us to uh, to use this to do it um, but it's uh it's done the job for today it's cost us uh, not a huge amount of money to do it and we're gonna be able at half past 12 so quicker than i was expecting to go and start loading up our pancake factory in fact first i want to go and feed the cows so in order to feed the cows we are going to need our little feeding wagon here and i've got a really good idea for how to fill this because this does not take a huge amount uh it does not even take a full bale i don't think so what i'm gonna do is just pull this out to here so that we can back it in and uh, feed the cows. And then I've put this on the front of here. Because if I can spike both these bales at the same time and load them up. Well, let's lift the weight off the back so we're not dragging that. Uh, if I can spike both of these at the same time, uh, then we will be able to feed the cows with an equal amount from each. Now, I think we've got yeah we've got more a thousand liters more uh hay than we've got silage thankfully hay we can feed directly as well so let's bring both of these up here and i'm hoping that this will get both of these at the same time so up and this is why i put the weight on the back All right 
And then down. No, that's only taking the hay. No, no, that did take a bit of the silage. As long as the amount is even, it's good. Yeah, there we go. So that's done that. 65% and 73%. What mix has that given us? That has given us a mix of 63% hay, 37% silage. Fantastic. Uh, let's back this up into here and unload it. I haven't connected up the PTO. That's the trouble. Right, PTO is connected. Reverse it in. And there we go. TMR. In it goes. And that is going to up the amount of feed our cows have very nicely. And yeah, two and a half thousand. That is the equivalent of two big packs. Uh, and that is just such a better use of our money. Second one done. And we've got about even amounts in our bales again. Fantastic. And what's the mix this time? The mix this time is a pretty much a 50-50 ratio. So, yeah, I think it'll uh, it'll do fine. Unload that. Another two and a half thousand. I think this is good. I think we need to buy some silage bales in order to, to do this. And, uh, and that's the way to go. And just sell all of our silage. We make more from the electricity that we generate from silage uh, than it costs us to buy silage bales. So it makes much more sense to uh, just buy silage bales when we need them. Both of those just shy of being empty, but should be good enough for one more mix after that. This is working absolutely perfectly and it should give us over half full i think with our cows um, which keep our cows going for a good long while and uh, and keep that milk flowing which is what we need we need i think it's about a tenth of our milk going to butter and then the rest of it uh, going straight into the pancake factory to make the pancakes so uh, this is a good way of doing this and getting this all to work there we are so we'll park this up and out the way uh over here we'll do and then we can uh just put the last of this in here put this away as well so what's the mix this time it's oh the mix is just slightly too much to the hay so uh it'll be forage going in this time uh, but it will all still go in so that works we'll back this into here properly like so and then over here something i haven't checked and what i think that this load up point here is for is how much slurry we have I don't expect it to be much. Uh, 5,812 litres. So, yeah, not too much. Um, we've got 2,497 litres of milk, which is almost enough milk to offset the butter that we've already created. So that's pretty perfect. And we need to go and take the eggs over as well. So let's hook up the milk trailer to this, get the milk over to the pancake factory. We can then get the eggs over there as well with David Brown. And uh, we will be ready to start making some pancakes. So first 2,000 litres of milk in our little milk trailer. I have to attach it here because, of course, there's no electrical connection on the David Brown. So uh, it won't connect up to that. Bring this round the back and unload it. Does it not unload here? Ah, uh, there we go. Finally found the place. It's right on the edge here. So unload that there. 2,000 litres of milk in. And we'll go forwards before we cause more of a jackknife there. I don't think I have to open it or anything like that. I think it should just work. Uh, we've got another 500-ish litres of milk, so we'll grab that and put that in as well. 
so that we just empty everything out 498 liters yeah so almost 500 liters uh, that is going to be a great start to get this going and then ah uh, would you know what i'm actually going to put this not in here i'm going to put this in as butter because if we we do it that way we now know that we'll need sort of two uh full tankers of milk to offset that so yeah we'll go that way and uh, and do that can i get this to back into here oh i don't want to back this dolly trailer up i really don't it's gonna be a pain it's the trouble with this dolly trailer compared to others and i think i said this last time i tried to back it up it is so close to the tractor and it comes up at such a horrible angle with that top uh, point that it it just is a real pain and the unload point for this seems to be right at the back which is why i was having a problem with it at the pancake factory you have to you have to pull past rather than uh, on the actual icon to do this i will park this back here being careful not to have to deal with dolly too much and that i think is our mercedes done for the day we can now go and switch the david brown to having the forks on the front and get some eggs over to the factory so reflecting on what it's taken to do the cows and keep them fed i think we could probably get away with buying uh six of each bale so six hay six silage and uh and and that would be everything we need to feed our cows for the year uh basically a cow because we only have six cows uh take uh six of each bale for a year uh, which is uh fantastic that that will just work out really well for us overall might grab an extra silage bale simply because the silage bales uh, are only three and a half thousand liters and the uh, hay bales of course are four and a half thousand liters so for every silage for every four si no three and a half silage bales uh, we need uh, we, we have an extra bales worth of uh, the hay so yeah i need to keep an eye on that my eggs are in our pancake factory uh we have butter we don't have maple syrup but we don't require maple syrup for the pancakes with mail with that so let's turn on the pancakes activate that we are not missing ingredients which is perfect and we got our first liter of pancakes the pancakes are being produced uh, that is absolutely fantastic uh the other thing i want to do then is oh wow we could create cheese uh let's uh let's create butter though let's activate that start creating some butter and yeah by the time we come to do stuff next month uh, it looks like we're going to have some pancakes ready and we'll see how they uh, how they perform. I'm very, very pleased with that, though, today. We've uh, we've got everything accomplished. Uh, we've got the eggs and milk to the pancake factory. We've got our fields fertilized, ready for later in the year. And uh, yeah, that is. Uh, oh, yeah. And the cows, of course, the cows are nicely fed. The only thing I'm slightly worried about is how are the chickens for feed? So chicken feed, that sorghum has kept them going ever since we did it. So uh, yeah, we are we are in a good place with it. Absolutely perfect. So not much happening. We we are on our way to getting some calves at some point as well as well. So that is going to be where we leave it for today nice productive day on the farm things are moving along nicely we will be planting the sorghum next time 
So I'm gonna get this started and make sure that this is all running. We don't need to really be following this today. It's it's pretty good in so far as what this will do. So uh, yeah, we've got the sorghum in here before. We've got half a cedar full of seed and half a cedar full of uh, fertilizer. This should finish this field off without too much problem. We will set up a new course. Uh, it has detected the field, which is excellent. Uh, we've got a single tool. I want to do two headlands. We want to start work on the center of the field. And that should do it. So generate me a course. Starting up the top end, finishing down the bottom here. Uh, yeah, that's going to be uh, pretty much spot on for what we want. So... Let's get this round and get this up to here. Line her up and first waypoint, away it goes. And we're out of money. So, yeah, we are going to have to head back to the farm. Sell some maple syrup, get some money in. Or sell some pancakes, get some money in. And then we can get this tractor started. This was potentially an issue, and we knew that coming into today. And I just wasn't watching my uh, amount, or the, the amount of money we had in the bank closely enough. So we will open the back of this and go and grab the forklift. We're going to have to put these sideways because, unfortunately, our flatbed here isn't wide enough to take these uh, widthways. You can tell how much I missed that we were in need of uh, doing this because I didn't include it in the intro. I always record my intros before I start uh, recording the main part just to, to give her an idea of what I'm aiming to do today. And the fact that selling this ahead of getting that in uh, wasn't, uh, wasn't included in that just uh, shows that uh, it's completely sort of slipped my mind. Uh, thankfully, we do have this, and selling these pancakes today is very much part of this. We actually really need to sell these pancakes today because if we don't, uh, the price is going to drop really badly. Uh, the best price for pancakes actually hits in March. So we are very much at the tail end of that with the price beginning to drop again. Get that in there perfect and then we'll slot this on but these will all fit in here fine we can do it in our truck and in fact getting two sets of pancakes going at a time uh, is really really good in fact we might be able to sell some more today while we've got this tractor out here the other jobs that we have to do is we do need to get another thousand liters of flour into the pancake factory to get it functioning again so we'll open this up and slot under the pallet, hopefully. Oh, uh, yeah, my forks are pointing right up. The visibility on this track is pretty good, uh, but there is the distinct possibility that you'll uh, not quite get the angle right. We've got it right this time, I think. Nope. Oh, now we're pointing down. Yeah, much easier from this angle. Especially if you know what you're doing. Right, there we go. That's got it. Bring it out slightly. Get those on the front of the forks. And we only need a 1,000 litres of flour. We haven't got enough of the other ingredients at the moment to get more in. So I'm just holding the flour back because I want it to be there. Should I need to make a quick sale and not have the ingredients to do stuff in our pancake factory so under here we now have yep a whole load of flour uh so it's we've got yeah we've got more flour now than than we have milk for this so next thing to get in here will be milk but uh the butter and the eggs we have enough to do absolutely tons of those so uh, we'll get that going. That will start loading up another load of pancakes here for us. And we can go and get these pancakes sold up at the sell point we put in near the top of the map. 
I think in light of what we've discovered with uh, how long this is going to take, uh, as in not very long, and we don't have a huge amount of money, I think it might be wise for us to go and do that planting ourselves. Selling off the pancakes. They do sell from the back of the truck, which is great. Uh, 8,619 from them which is uh, actually a really good start. I'm very, very pleased with that. That means uh, that we can turn our crop every year into a huge amount of profit. Uh, if we can get all of our flour uh, turned into pancakes, uh, what we're going to need for that, though, I think is a, a fair amount of the milk and the... Uh, eggs. In fact, eggs aren't too bad. It's milk that's going to be our real stopper for that. So uh, let's get back. I need to see if we can expand the cows anymore uh, and go from there, I think. But first, we're going to get some sorghum planted. So back to our tractor. And yeah, let's cancel our course. We do not need the course on here. We are going to do this ourselves uh, because this is uh, it's only nine in the morning. I was expecting all of that first bit to take us quite a bit longer. That truck actually is really fast. Uh, we need to get this field planted with the sorghum and rolled today. Uh, that should not be an issue whatsoever. We have sorghum selected. We are down and I don't think this turns on. Nope. So uh, it's just straight across the field. A nice straight line at 90 degrees. A little bit lower gear. And uh, yeah, this MP track should have no issue with this tool. In fact, I think first gear, second gear, we're good. So uh, away we go and sorghum in. This field is about the perfect size for this cedar. Uh, this is uh, an exact final row we've got here. I think we're, we're doing okay. I'm just trying to keep things nice and straight. Make sure that we get all of this in. Because if we don't, uh, then I've got to go back and do uh, sort of a tiny little bit along the edge. Um, but I think we're good. And we're coming up to the end. So, yeah, that's good. Possible little bit missed on the edge there, but I think we're all right. There we go. Great demand at the animal dealer at the moment. I think that's probably for something like... Ah, oh, we've got a tiny bit here I need to go back over. Uh, we've got something like... Uh, in fact, we've got nothing, I think, thanks to the animal dealer. That'd be straw or hay or something like that, and, and we don't have any of that in our stores at the moment. So I'm not going to worry too much about that great demand. Uh, what we will go and do is go and see if the pancake factory has produced any more pancakes that we can sell today. Uh, and if it has, we can go and sort a, uh, a whole nother round of those. Otherwise, we'll get the rollers on the back of this and start rolling that field. So nothing has yet been produced from the pancake factory. We'll have a quick look at that in a moment. Yeah, so uh, we've only used about 100 litres of flour and we've got 270 litres of pancakes. So it's looking like it's going to take roughly four hours uh, for a pallet of pancakes. So eight hours in total will take us to the end of the day. I'm thinking we're going to have a whole load of pancakes to sell at the end of today and we'll want to load up with whatever milk the cows have got at the end of the day as well for that uh we're probably going to want to start selling eggs soon unless we can find another use for our eggs around the farm uh then we're, we're probably going to want to start selling those because uh, they are they're, they're there to sell and we can make some extra cash with those so uh, I'm going to keep an eye on that and uh, and see where we go. We only need six eggs for every load of pancakes. So it's it's not a huge amount. Unfold this and start in... Actually, I'm going to start in the top corner. 
We are going to have to go round the whole field at the end, um, but it's easier starting in the top corner with this and uh, to get these rolled. I think uh, this is going to be a fairly quick turnaround for everything today. We uh, are doing pretty well. There's uh, not a huge amount of stuff stopping us getting this saw gum sorted uh, and getting everything turned around. And I think we are going to be doing grass work next time. Uh, we'll get another cut of our grass. Uh, and then after that, uh, we might see if we can add a new crop. I might try and put a little bit of land aside, maybe in the center of our farm yard, uh, to see if we can plant some trees and maybe produce some maple syrup. I talked about it last time, uh, and I've got the maple... put. Uh, maple syrup production mod in so uh yeah we might see if we can make some maple syrup add that to our pancakes as well going forward and uh, and just bump up the price of them a little bit especially as it's falling main body of the field is done and now i'm on to the headlands just trying to make sure that we get as inclusive a roll in these top ends of the fields as possible and uh yeah Field is looking nice and smooth and stone free. I love that it is just small stones that our plows are pulling up. Uh, it would be fairly bad if we had to do stone picking on here every year to get rid of all of these stones. Uh, but uh, it's it's not worked out too badly for us in the overall scheme of things. We're going to head up here get this all rolled in here so we do two headland rolls because of the the amount of space it takes to turn around and i tend to normally try and turn around on the field if i can um but i do sometimes get a bit of overlap as long as we get the whole field rolled i'm not too worried about it yeah, there we are one last little lot of stones oh they didn't quite get caught so just back this up gonna mess up my lovely lines on the end of this field but not much i can do about that the overlap wasn't quite there and look at that that finishes us off perfectly placed to head straight back to the farm now looking at our productions we're gonna run out of milk long before we get uh, the pancakes i want to get out of here so what i'm gonna do is head back to the farm and hook up the milk trailer and we should have around five 600 liters of milk in here i think pick it up pick everything there and load it up 743 liters of milk fantastic so uh, that is more milk than i was expecting and our other tract is actually in the way at the moment of me unloading this we'll move to david brown Get that uh, positioned round the front because I don't think we're going to need anything other than uh, to load more pancakes today if we're lucky. And then we can bring this in with this milk trailer and get it unloaded. Keep an eye for when it actually tells me it can. I think it's going to be when it's the other side. There we are. That's quite a big... Uh, space between the back of this and the icon that's really interesting um but it does work and we've uh, we've loaded a load more milk in so that should keep the pancake factory working now and that is pretty good i think for us today we've got that we've got that field planted we've got uh, our first batch of pancakes sold i do want to sell our second batch of pancakes today and yeah we're not there yet with the eggs there's there's another pallet of eggs coming um but they are not there at the moment let's undo all of this and oh, let's go wash this down and fill it up because i've got time to do that today and uh, it's good to do both of those things because otherwise i'm just gonna forget so we'll refuel our tractor first takes a little bit more fuel than the uh, david brown not a huge amount more david brown only takes about uh 
80 liters i think this takes well this takes 120 so uh, a little bit more fuel for this just make it nice and shiny again and uh, then i might head back to my tent for a, a nice cup of tea and pick this up later so that uh, we can get everything loaded up uh, and sold because there's very little left to do on the farm today to actually prepare us going forwards we've got a lot planned for tomorrow don't want to start encroaching in those jobs because otherwise we just won't have enough to keep us going tomorrow let's go and have a look over here so this has uh, 813 litres of flour, uh, 1,888 litres of milk, 723 litres of butter, and 1,201 litres of eggs. Uh, and we're about halfway through a pallet of pancakes. So, uh, yeah, that's, uh, that's really good. I'm just wondering, how big is the maple syrup farm? Maple syrup production mod here. Oh, wow. It's 16,000 for it. It requires water. And uh, yeah, over here, I think, over there would be a fairly good place to put it. We'd have to remove those trees. And but yeah, right there. We remove uh, these batch trees and, uh, and, and get that there. So I think what we'll do for the rest of today, while we're waiting for stuff, is I'm going to clear this area here so that we can put the maple syrup farm in. How much to remove this? To remove that is 732. So sell that. Yes. And that clears us a nice area here. And then we can uh, look at getting rid of... I think everything to this tree line so this tree here is our outer edge and everything this way can go so let's uh cut some trees down and get rid of this so that's one down uh i've got to be careful i do not want any of these hitting my windmill and they've got to go this way because otherwise we won't be able to cut them uh, in the... Because uh, they'll fall on the other land. Yeah, that's good. How close did that get to my uh, windmill? Oh, not very close at all. That's great. And then... Yeah, this little tree here needs to go. So we'll get rid of that as well. And then this little tree over here needs to go as well. So that will clear this area rather nicely for the farm. Uh, we can put that in there. And, uh, and have the maple syrup nice and close to that. Uh, which is really what we want. I think we can probably make more money with this from wood chips. In fact, I'm wondering, will our... No, I was really hoping our mini BGA might take wood chips, but it doesn't. So, yeah. So, what are our options in the forestry equipment? Let's have a quick look. I did download some mods to help us out here. Yeah, we got these three mods here. Uh, so, self-made forest trailer, devour trees, and the Vermeer BC1000XL. I think if we can do wood chips from the smaller parts of the trees with this Vermeer that would be great uh, and then the larger bits we should be able to load onto this forest trailer uh the devour trees despite it being cheaper yeah requires 150 horsepower so we can't go with that uh we will lease the Vermeer I'm gonna put uh black rims on it yeah doesn't cost me anything so perfect uh, that is going to cost 1938 yes. And then a uh, self-made forest trailer. Let's get this in the red with some white rims, maybe. Yeah, that looks, that fits him with the farm very nicely. Uh, 1050 extra cost for the rim color. So we will buy that. Yes, okay. And we're going to need something to load up. 
the logs as well so how can we get a oh i want an inexpensive log grab that one is quite a lot of money i think we're gonna have to lease that i don't think right now i can afford to buy that so we will lease that uh for 153 it's only gonna cost us uh 30 pound a day so there we go let's jump into this uh yeah this i mean these trees here these we want to to get uh nicely threaded and uh and get rid of uh we'll take both tractors up to the shop so i'm gonna drop off the forks and uh the barrel off this uh we'll grab the mercedes and uh, and take a convoy up to the shop get this all done in one go is gonna be my best bet so that off and um, drop these over here with the rest of it and yeah plenty of fuel in this so we'll just head up to the shop and we'll go grab all this new equipment my hope with this equipment that we're getting today is that we're able to at least break even if not make a bit of money from these trees and clearing these uh, we are going to have to get a stump grinder i think uh, because uh, we're going to have a load of stumps in the way of uh, our maple uh, maple syrup creation or our maple syrup orchard. That is, oh, that is perfect on the back of here. That is just a great little setup. Where is my MB track? There it is. We'll grab that as it gets close. But I think we're, uh, yeah, we're going to have to grab ourselves a, ooh, uh, and grab ourselves a stump grinder as well. I think there is a, fun a piece of functionality I might be able to get where I can sort these stumps out with my chainsaw. So we'll, we might see if we can uh, find a way of doing that. Uh, this, I'm hoping, fits on here. I have a vague recollection. Oh, it's another one with the low hitch. Or with the high hitch on it why um but yeah my my hope is that we'll be able to uh to get that so many mods like this it it makes zero sense in fact kudos to this mod this mod actually has the hitch on the right bit absolutely fantastic i uh will do a tutorial i think because we've come across so many trailers that have had this issue on here and just it's it's nuts uh because any old tractors you use in farm sim will hitch with that too high and so many of them end up having it where the pto then goes through the hitch and it's it's maddening so back to the farm and i want to measure out roughly how long we need to cut these logs to do this so the base easiest way to do that is just to pull this alongside here like this like that and then i can see from this cut here exactly how long this should be uh 2.7 meters so this will take about three meter logs on it so uh if we can get as close to three meters as possible that would be great we'll clear off this uh and we'll keep the longest bit for that i uh, think we only have two trees and then we've got this bit over here we'll take the hide worker off this and then we're gonna need to go and get interesting i had to stop the only way i could stop the hide worker was to detach this i think this, this mod is going to be an interesting one it strikes me as a, as a mod that might end up uh with some odd issues so uh, let's get it set up anyway i'm hoping uh it's gonna be oh i have a feeling that this is this is going to be one of those things that just is not going to work anywhere like what, how i want it to because looking at that uh it is is this self-powered yeah it is 
So that out. Unfold it. No, uh, unfold the wood chipper. There we go. Turn it on. Right, let's uh let's grab our trailer, put the top on it, or put uh, at least a level on it and see if this will actually work so i'm just going to put the standard 8000 liter configuration on it that should be hopefully enough so if we bring this up alongside it will be very telling if it picks it up is it going to pick it up yes okay so that should work let's go and cut a bit of tree off in fact let's clear this tree off and then uh, we can come in with some shorter bits. Uh, I don't think it'll do the longer bits. I don't I'll do these bigger bits. And I think that would be an issue anyway. Those will probably sell for more money. And we can put them on the bale trailer. So these trees, I think, are the ones that, that hopefully we're going to be able to put in them. Uh, especially the branches from them. So if we take that branch off... Can I pick that up with my hands? Yes, I can. Will this go in there and uh, and get chipped? Because yeah, these these are the trouble trees. I will put them in. If I cut this a bit smaller, right, there we go. Smaller bit. Like that won't go in. Go in the other way round. Then maybe so that is cut off the main part of the tree. And no. Why will nothing go in there? Right, so going on our three meter length. So one, two, three, four, five. Okay. One, two, three, four, five. Cut. One, two, three, four, five. Cut. One, two, three, four, five, cut. Right, I think that, yep, that is pick upable. Turn that, and we'll try and put that in. Feed it in carefully. I don't think any wood wants to go into this wood chipper, you know. I really don't. Wow. Let's try this bit then. Shorter bits. We got it. Oh, we got a tiny little pile of wood chips in this. But it does not seem to want to take them very easily. In fact, I am having to basically shut them through. And oh, yeah, this wood chipper does not work very well. I'm able to get it in, but uh, it's at quite a cost. That is not great. Okay, let's get the second one cut. Okay, that is this, fee, uh, this tree cut. Again, I'm going to try and get this in and chuck it. Oh, look at that. That actually went through. It didn't actually do anything, but it did get fed in. So we'll uh, we'll try a second one. Oh, this can't be one of those mods that just needs to be carefully used. It it doesn't look like one of those ones that wants to feed in easily. That's got that in. Yeah, this is definitely not a large log. Uh, one we've got 1205 liters in there though so not bad 
Uh, it's just getting... We've got to see if we can get these other trees in. Otherwise, it's time to jump in this tractor and get this out of the way. Drop our log trailer off and see if we can pick up these and put them on the trailer. Three meter logs uh, should be fairly good for us, especially at these larger sizes. Last time we did this, we only had one meter logs. And in fact, in some cases, shorter than that. And uh, and so, yeah, it is, uh, this should be much better. Not great to not have this log trailer attached to a tractor. So I might go and get the Mercedes, the MB track. Otherwise, we get a situation like we've just had where there's just not enough weight with the trailer and it gets moved about the moment you clip it so we'll hook this up and that is on the lower hitch absolutely fantastic it is of course also caught on the tractor move that out of the way we'll load this up at this slight odd angle um but this should do the trick and uh yeah this should work much better and i'll probably leave the mb track on here to go and sell this uh, the wood chips has not been quite so successful. And I think I will probably get rid of that wood chipper. Uh, it's not great. And this is all ready to go and sell. So let's turn off the David Brown. And we'll go and sell these logs. See how much we get. And then we'll try and deal with this mess over here. I think these logs are going to make us far more money than the wood chips. Uh, which is unfortunate because that wood chipper is what cost us the extra cash. Uh, it's mainly, though, because it won't do most of the wood chipping. That's the biggest problem. Let's unclip all of this. There we go. And right, sell it. 2,844. Oh, it paid for the, it paid for the trailer. And paid for the uh, the log grab. Did not pay for our wood chipper. But it's not supposed to. The wood chipper is supposed to pay for itself. And I really don't think it's going to. So let's have another go with this wood chipper. We got a few wood chips in the trailer. We'll hook it back up to this tractor here. And, uh, and we'll try and get some of those other bits through. And throw that in. That does not want to go in there whatsoever. It is very, very defiant. Let's try it the other way around. Maybe chopping it into smaller pieces. Wow. This is this is just not a piece of wood. Yeah, that's not a piece of wood. Okay. So, we want to chop these trees into smaller pieces and hopefully get uh, a better cut of all of this. So, let's get all of the branches off here. We'll try and get the main body of one of these trees in and go from there. Most of these, trying to cut them into smaller pieces is just resulting in them completely disappearing. There is nothing to these at all. So uh, most of this we can just clear up by doing this, really. I think we'll end up maybe with a knuckle at the end. Nope, we can get rid of that completely. Perfect. So uh, yeah, we just end up with uh, sort of these longer bits here that still cut into smaller pieces. And those can just go in the back of this. Uh, these are just not going to work at all as far as... Uh, getting them through any kind of but anything that we can afford certainly uh, right so same with this one we'll cut these off and then i will uh cut the arms into smaller bits that will disappear and we'll cut the main tree into bits that we can load up into the trailer for all my fears that i'd be left with a load of scrap wood around here uh we've cleared most of it up we've got just this bit here left so i've got to cut this into smaller chunks 
that will be able to load into the back of the trailer fairly erratically shaped wood so none of this is going to make a lot of money and uh, no point in wow uh nope that, that will be okay uh no point in in doing longer bits we wouldn't have been able to to really get well there wouldn't have been many to put onto the logging trailer so i wasn't going to pop around with that too much but just get rid of this get it out of here and uh, and then we're good and yeah i'm happy with that we'll hold on to the uh logging uh grab the wood grab because that is actually quite useful to us if we want to do any more uh work with uh with wood uh, and yeah that is gonna be really really nice how many liters of uh pancakes have we got we've got a thousand liters here plus 204 liters so i think we're probably gonna end up doing a pancake sale tomorrow and uh and clearing that out uh, and doing those then uh, this is ready to be strapped down i'm just gonna run these down to the train yard we'll get them sold and uh, and hopefully make at least a little bit of cash off here i'd like to get back up to eight thousand. i don't think this is going to be worth uh the 1200 that we're looking for so here we are at our destination to sell uh we will unclip all of these yeah there's not a huge amount in here at all uh, that one off so how much is this going to be what do we reckon 500 pound wow 608 i was not that far off so uh there we go that is all of the wood in that area dealt with uh think that that is probably where we'll leave it i need to go and get a stump grinder we need to get rid of that or maybe i'll be able to do it with my chainsaw we'll see if we can sort that out uh we've got the next round of silage to do next time as well so we'll uh, we'll be getting on with that and there's more pancakes coming out so uh, maybe we can start getting them with some maple syrup from next time as well. So today I'm going to get the silage production going in the background. We actually have the wood chips to sell first. So I think the best thing for me to do is to get my mower up and running. We'll get this going on the smaller field and we'll see if we can get this cut using course play. So back her up and grab this all connected up nice and quickly and head out to the field see if uh, see if we can get this going in the background because we've done an awful lot of this mowing and silage creation uh, on video so i want to concentrate more on setting up our maple syrup and i'm kind of hoping that this will be able to just hang around in the background and get this job done so bring this over here bring up our course play and it's detected the field rather nicely, which is very, very useful. Uh, number of headlands, I think we'll only throw a couple of those in. Start work on the headland itself. It's going to end up with an offset. And I think the safest thing for us to do is probably have it so that it goes around the field counterclockwise. Does mean it'll be running over the grass while it's doing that first cut but other than that i think it should be fine so generate me a field work course there we go starting at this top corner so we'll close the course generator and get out of here and yeah that's going to start the other way around bring it oh bring it into first gear i'm definitely having some interesting issues with my shifter at the moment doesn't seem to be behaving itself properly uh it, it should be all right i think and we might try and replace it with something in the near future let's go first waypoint and away you go we just want to double check that this is going to go the right way and it's interesting because it's not running at an offset we really really want that tool offset 
to work. So I'm going to try and position it in the right place. And back one, I think. Yeah, back there. And we'll stop that and we'll just start it running again uh, at the beginning of the field. Because, yeah, that has definitely got the wrong offset on it at the moment. So, again, line it up to the first waypoint. And we will set it going there. So, up it goes. And it's got a little bit of a delay putting it down. Or it did last time. This time, seems to be running all right. And, yeah, much happier with that. That's got our mower actually over the top of this. So we might have a little bit of extra grass this time. Um, but at the moment, that is getting on with the job exactly as we want it to. So in the meantime, we are going to grab our MB track here and head out and get this sold. We are going to need the front loader from the uh, David Brown in a little bit so that we can actually go and uh, load up the pancakes to sell. We should get about eight grand off the pancakes, plus uh, maybe a grand or so off this uh, little bit. Oh, no, I don't think we even get that much off this wood chips. Best place to sell wood chips right now is Sawmill South, so we'll tag that. But I have a fairly good idea of where that is in fact we want to turn the other way around out here and head down that way uh, both of our arable fields are looking pretty good at the moment they're looking uh like they're they're going to be good crops and we'll be harvesting those uh, in the next couple of videos i think sort of wrapping things up uh with uh, maybe another four videos uh, this week on here so looking to wrap this series up by friday uh, we should have full pancakes with maple syrup production going by then and that is really my aim how uh, how good is our production set up by the end of this and so down to the other end let's go and sell some wood chips this is my first visit to this part of the map and it's actually a really interesting area really lovely area with lots of extra trees and things let's tip these wood chips and uh, this time we're putting them out of the uh, flaps there which makes a lot of sense actually unloading them that way here but we are 383 pound better off from that uh, lost 85 pounds so this will probably pay for the use of our, our hired work but look at this area of the map this is a really nice place to sort of set up a farm and and make something a little bit interesting it's a pity the the area around the main farm isn't more like this because uh, that would make it much much more interesting that plain to the northern part of this map that uh, really doesn't do so much of this map justice while I've got a little bit of time on my hands, I've just swung by the railway station up here because we've got just this tiny little bit of wood in our trailer. Didn't go out with the wood chips. Uh, I can pick it up. It is probably worth next to nothing. We're probably going to make less than the fuel that we took to get up here. But I was just intrigued to see how much it was worth. Uh, 45 pound. Actually, that's not to be sniffed at. That easily covers an hour's worth of work from our hired worker. So, yeah, I'm, I'm actually quite pleased that I made the trip out here to come and get rid of that. It means we have a nice empty trailer. We can now go and reconfigure this trailer to be a flatbed. And hopefully by the time we go to do that, our mower will have finished cutting our smaller field. And uh, we'll be able to load up the pancakes and get them sold. Now that we've emptied the trailer, we can get it into our shed and just take the sides off so that we've got a nice flatbed configuration for it and can easily transport these pancakes. I want to make sure my pancake production is turned off as well. I don't want to be producing any more that are... Uh, without that so let's customize the trailer uh, yeah take it down to just a bale trailer and customize that yes 
and then we can hook it back up onto our tractor like so and then i want to check on our production status so pancakes we've got a 124 liters there so i want to deactivate that we're going to try and get some maple syrup in to this i think we're going to need a water trailer to do that as well although our milk trailer would do that so maybe we could get some water in let's just oh no we'll need to check that with our maple uh, maple syrup production in a bit so uh let's take this tractor around and actually i'm wondering if we can put this on the mowing i haven't really got this set up for that but i'm wondering if it would be a better setup to have this just doing that job and then we can bring the david brown back into the yard and uh maybe hook this up onto our truck that trailer onto our truck instead yeah i think it'd be wise to basically just have the mercedes processing all of this today uh the david brown is doing a grand job it is very nicely working on this and probably want to try and grab it before it starts this next row so let's just jump off here take our hired worker off gonna back this up and drop it down i'm guessing i can detach it yep in that state so that's fine uh, we're then gonna copy this course put it on to the mb track so copy to course please uh, we don't have the offset, so we will have to set that up again. Uh, but that should be all right. Anyway, this this tractor should be able to run this mower no problem whatsoever. So I want to make sure that uh, we're just keeping running all day. That's the thing. It's We've had this. We know this is an all-day job. We know that uh, getting this mowing working... That does take a while. That is uh, quite a good tool offset, actually. Uh, nearest waypoint. Let's see all of them. Bring it forwards. And see if this goes with the waypoint I'm expecting it to. Yep, that has picked up right where the David Brown has left off. So uh, we'll leave that doing that and we'll go and load up our pancakes i've put the forks on the front we've got the barrel on the back that will just even things out a little bit don't really need it we know that this will handle this without much problem otherwise um, but uh yeah it just helps to sort of balance things out a little bit and i want to go and see if we can get the truck and load this on uh, but first we're just going to get these pancakes onto the trailer. Not underneath it. I want to be... That's interesting. You see that? It's just poking that up a little bit and putting it underneath. Which is a little bit odd. I would... Uh, I'd prefer to properly put them on. Uh, oh, actually, we've got... With these, we don't actually have to put them on this trailer like I'm doing. Uh, we could just put them in the flatbed of the truck. That's how we sold them last time. Uh, but I've got the flatbed here now. And I'm eager to see if it works on a truck. If it doesn't, we'll just hook it up to Dave Brown. Because Dave Brown is more than capable of taking this. And that's why I should actually have just had the David Brown down here to begin with. The big advantage to using the truck over this tractor, of course, is the fact that this is limited to 20 miles an hour. Which our truck most definitely is not. Okay, so we've got the truck down here. Let's back it up, see if we can connect it. I don't know if this will do this or not. A little bit further. It has got a blank plate at the back. Yeah, there we go. Nicely hooked on. No cables or anything, but uh, yeah, we can use this. All right, let's take this up to the pancake sell point and get a little bit of extra money in. We're down to 6,986. And I think we need 16,000 for the uh, actual maple syrup production. So we might have to go and sell something else before we can actually finish uh, doing that today. And of course, 
thing we have to do is uh, we still got lots of flour kicking about. Here we come, around the top, past the shop. And this, this doesn't look that odd. I was expecting this to look a little bit stranger than it does. Uh, but nope, it works pretty well, to be honest. There we go. Selling off the pancakes. We're up to 14,649. Yeah, I think our best bet is going to be to go and sell a pallet of uh, the flour. That should give us one and a half thousand. And that should be enough for us to get the pancake production. And then from there... Oh, sorry, the maple syrup production. And then from there, I think we'll have a look and see what else we need. So let's grab one of these pallets. How many pallets have this got left? We've got six pallets of flour left. That's more than enough. Especially as we're going to go into another round of uh, creating flour in the near future. The thing we're short of at the moment is milk. So we want to see if we can get some more milk into the pancake factory, but not before I get uh, a load of maple syrup. So let's uh, get this loaded up. As we discovered with these last time, it's easier for me to do it from this angle. Uh, even if it does still seem to go underneath. Right, and as we've got no public roads here, I'm just going to stick this on the front of here and head down to... Well, actually, is the rail yard the best place? The flower at the moment, yep, it is still the train yard. Looking at how close this is going to leave us to, <laughs> to where we're going to need to spend, I don't know if we might have to sell another one of these. Uh, we'll have to see how things go. It's Having enough flour is not a problem. Uh, we can always keep selling flour off occasionally to bring more money in 15,000 16,026 yeah we are gonna be really close to uh having the right amount of cash and in fact by the time we've made it back to the farmyard uh we have less than the money we need so i'm just gonna go and grab this one on the end and run that down to the train yard quickly uh, it'll make sense for us to, to give ourselves a bit of breathing space today. Although, this tractor has finished. Perfect. So we can get this started on the second field. Now, I think this second field is going to give us a little bit of a problem. Because uh, last time it, we tried to do one of these fields or one of... Uh, we tried to do the arable side of this. Uh, it detected this as uh, one big field. So this time, I'm hoping that might not be the case. Uh, we'll see how it does. Just bring this to here. Bring up here. And yeah, it's detecting it. You can see under here as one big field. Our grass here is not wide enough. So I'm going to have to generate a custom field. So we'll get out of there and uh, we will deselect the tractor so i need to jump out of this and then go back in and that then yeah gives me the chance to draw a custom field and one two three four five six seven for the whole field save it yes right and now i need to select this field and edit it and we'll have a quick look and do you know what that's not bad we've got a couple of bits and pieces that are a bit outside so i've got some fixing up to do there um but once i've done that we're going to be good to go and that is pretty good i've gone around the whole field and just made everything fit as best I can. Uh, that is looking fairly well. I've got a little bit here that could possibly do with moving. That moves in slightly. Otherwise, yep, that's perfect. So out of here. And we will jump into our tractor. We will set up. So now it's picking up CP2. 
and we'll set it with exactly the same setup as before uh, it's going to start over there though so uh, we want to do that and actually going around this way we'll keep it inside when it gets near that tree as well which will be really good and while we're heading over, we will unfold the mower. Hopefully. It's always difficult to tell when this mower is actually unfolding. Yeah, I heard a clunk. So that might actually be going. Is it? Uh, no, it's not. So unfold it. That should do it. Yeah, that's unfolding now. And that way, we can go first waypoint a little bit ahead of it. And it should be absolutely fine for it. And we won't need to worry too much. In position, folded out. First waypoint. Away you go. And back into the mowing while we go and sell a bit more flour. Here's something that a lot of people have told me about. That, uh... I should point out and there's a reason why i haven't done any of these so cutting this signpost with a chainsaw will permanently remove all trees from this area cutting this signpost with a chainsaw will permanently remove all loose scrap in this area and cutting this signpost with a chainsaw will permanently remove all power lines from this area so yeah if you're on this map and you want to clear this area out a bit uh you can cut any of those signposts down to do that i'm not going to remove the scrap uh, I'm, I'm not looking to uh, to remove that at the moment, but just an interesting note if you uh, if you want to clear this area out and uh, and get rid of various bits and pieces, uh, you can very easily uh, just by cutting down those signposts. Let's get these unloaded onto here then. Give us that extra one and a half grand we need to uh, finish this off. Uh, there we go 1476 that should give us enough of a cushion now to be able to get our maple syrup production started i'm back down to the yard again and we'll just park this tractor up here there we go and can very quickly i've downloaded the lumberjack mod so now we can get rid of tree stumps with our chainsaw which uh, makes a lot of sense for us on here uh the red circles are because that's that's the destruction symbol under that so you can now tell if uh we're gonna have little tree uh whether we're actually gonna get wood or, or whether it's gonna destroy a piece of wood from uh just from uh mousing over it like that or, or displaying it like that which i think is really really useful do we have any more tree stumps in this area i think we have some yeah we have some early ones so we'll get rid of that as well and that's got that job done so we'll move well out of the way and we can put our maple syrup production in now so under production don't think it's under orchards no unfortunately i think it must be under factories then let's have a look through here no it's under greenhouses so we've got maple syrup production mod there so this should fit in here quite nicely yeah so i'm gonna have to uh, again turn off or, or uh, do a free placement as we have to uh, around here normally. So 16,000. And into that space there. That should work fairly well, I think. Yeah, we've got... This is, again, the scrap metal and stuff, which I'm not removing at the moment. That is a big part of that. Uh, also, we've got a whole load of rocks in the middle here. Um, but that's all fine. Oh, yeah. So this is our maple syrup production we come over here we can see what we need uh we need water and it will make maple syrup so every two liters of water will make one liter of maple syrup uh so if we get two thousand liters we'll make way more maple syrup than we need uh yeah four and a half maple syrups to 75 pancakes 
like the eggs we're going to be swimming in maple syrup without the need for it too much uh so let's go and hook up our little water tank uh, which is also our milk tank and go and do that we can't use this tractor for that though because this tractor has no electrical connection for a trailer and therefore we actually just can't empty that little tanker without an electrical connection a little bit weird but uh yeah i don't know i don't know why that's such a problem but there's definitely no electrical connection out the back here so as a result we're gonna have to use the truck i'm kind of hoping i'm gonna be able to fill this up from the river it should take all of the water our maple syrup production back it up will you refill from there no there's a water fill point up here at the top that will do it not costing me anything to fill up so that's good uh, that's what my chief worry was i thought we might have to pay uh, to get this water but no we are okay so back to the farm we can get the maple syrup producing perfect we are now fully loaded with that let's start up the maple syrup production so 2000 liters of water we're looking at about a thousand liters of maple syrup that should be more than enough so we will activate that and the maple syrup itself we will change the output mode to distributing so that goes straight across to the other side and into our pancake factory and that should mean that fairly soon we're going to have a whole load of maple syrup coming into here so what i want to do now is while we've got this on the back of here let's go and grab any milk that we have over with the cows so that we can get pancake production with the maple syrup now going as soon as we're able there we are empty that there yeah there we go full set of ingredients we are waiting for the maple syrup so i am going to activate that that should say missing stuff uh we've only got five liters of maple syrup so that will come straight into here and start producing uh pancakes with maple syrup which sell for just a little bit more than our uh standard pancakes do so 3935 uh well no the selling station uh it's 3842 uh here it's 4584 so actually it's the better way round to do it. I want to try and get things turned around fairly quickly. We'll set this off on course play on the second field so that the uh, the forage wagon can pick up fairly easily. In fact, I'm wondering how far through that field is it? Oh, no, he still has the headlands to go. I think we'll probably have this field done by the time uh, that tractor finishes mowing that one. So it's not going to take very long to windrow this up because uh, this is not a very big field and this is quite a wide little windrower. Quite amazingly, it looks like in the time it's taken me to row up this field, uh, the mower isn't actually going to be finished on the other one. We've got, uh, yeah, it's still on the main body of the field. It hasn't even started to touch the outer edges yet i think i'm just gonna go and get the forage wagon uh let's just bring this in here i want to see if we can incorporate this last little bit at the edge here into this um but yeah that mower is going to be going a little bit longer yet so easiest thing for us to do is just to head back to the farm grab the forage wagon on this i think seeing as the forage wagon eats up the fuel on this tractor uh, we will probably have to uh, refuel the David Brown as well. What I'm also going to do, though, is just leave this over here because we're going to need this windrower on the other field anyway. We might as well just uh, leave it here. And that way we don't have to trace all the way back to the farm to get it and can just uh, very quickly switch things over once that mower has finished. Right here is refueled and ready to go. 
so let's get this picked up and yeah that uh, that mower is still getting started on the uh, or still hasn't started the headlands so i think we're going to end up with a nice clear field here at the end uh, we'll be able to get this tractor doing the wind rowing on there and i don't know actually we might end up with this tractor doing the rolling on this field we'll win win row with the other tractor with the mb track and uh and and get the forage wagon working because yeah if we can get these fields rolled today that's gonna make the second cut of silage for the year uh be really good as well and uh, and make a massive difference so uh, it all depends on how much we can get done with these two tractors and really see where that leaves us one thing i need to make sure of before we tip this in here and activate it is that i'm not distributing we don't want to distribute this time because i want to hold some of this back so let's have a look uh we are got this on distributing so we want that storing we want to activate the grass silage creation and then we can just tip this out and keep going and that uh, should mean that we can get some silage for our cows and somebody pointed out it's probably a heck of a lot cheaper to do it with the silage in here especially as if i minimize the amount of silage uh, then uh, it should work really well so uh, yeah we're gonna do we're gonna use our own silage and just buy in some hay bales those are definitely cheaper than we can sell the silage for two loads down and our mower has almost finished so we will switch things around when we get back to the field it seems like the the amount we're getting off here is maybe not quite so high as we've had before i'm not 100 percent sure about that i need to, i need to sort of double check and see uh really how things have been previously but it doesn't feel quite as as good a yield at this point as we've had before uh, march april may no this should be fine we should be three months growth so that should all be good uh and it's a little bit odd because we definitely got it to full to, to full fertilization so not quite sure what's going on at the moment and this should be our mower coming up to the end uh, i think this corner is the last point yep there we go so what i'm going to do is just bring this round here drop it off the back and then we'll take this and we'll drop the mower off at the edge here and then when we're clearing up in a little bit we can just uh come and pick this up and take it away and we're gonna swap these two tractors over we'll get the david brown on the wind rower on the upper field uh while we start going behind it and collecting up uh, basically this is a great way for us to catch up and uh, and make sure that we get all of this done today because uh well it's gonna be really good for us to get all this done today let's uh, bring this to here we want to set course again we're on our second defined course uh we want to do a uh, headland first yes multiple tools uh, i'm gonna go counterclockwise and uh yeah two headlands should be good so generate me a field work course that's gonna go around that fairly quickly we'll start it off first. so first waypoint unfold the wind rower get it into position yep and away you go perfect that's off then i can hook this up finish off this field here and i think we're gonna finish this and get started following that and not be too far behind it so that's ideally what we want uh we will of course pull a little bit further behind it as we fill up but uh yeah this at uh, the moment should keep fairly good pace 
with our wind rower. Yeah, we're into the field well in time to keep up with the wind rower. And we'll only fall behind a bit when we go to empty this trailer. Slightly surprised I haven't fallen a full uh, circuit around the field behind. Especially if I can get this going fairly quickly. Yeah, we've managed to stay ahead of David Brown, which is great news. Might be a little bit interesting in this corner where I want to avoid catching the crop. My best bet is to come around here like so. And then try and reverse up as far as I can towards that as possible. And then we we might need to, uh, to create a little bit more space here. Oh, yeah, let me pass, please. Thank you. Yeah, that worked. Blocked by me. I'm hoping that's going to... Well, I don't know, actually. Missing little bits, which we'll have to come and clean up later. Uh, looking fairly good, though. I'm, I'm quite happy with where we are right now. Uh, we've got three full loads off these two fields. Uh, probably looking at somewhere around six in total, uh, which is not a bad amount. This is our fifth load into the uh, fermenting silo. Our tractor, our David Brown, has finished work, uh, which is excellent. So we want to go and collect that, uh, get that back to the field and uh, get that running on rolling the first field uh, while we finish off with the last couple of rows of grass on here. I don't think it's quite going to be six, uh, six full trailers. Uh, not far off, but it's, yeah, you can see these last sort of two and a half rows. Uh, one of them is very thin with how much it has. So we'll park this up here. We'll grab this and uh, we'll take this wind rower back to the yard. We'll get the roller on the back and come and get this set up on the smaller grass field. This roller is a very slow piece of kit to get to the field. But we have got it up there and uh, we'll get this set up with course play fairly quickly. I'll be very happy to get both of these fields rolled today. Although I doubt we'll actually get it rolled in the video. Let's uh, get the initial course cleared, get a new course on this. Get a new course on this, and yeah, I'm going to bump the headlands up to four on here, I think. That should do best. Headlands first. Uh, I'm going to do it round, because otherwise there's too much manoeuvring. Uh, generate me a course. Yeah, that's looking pretty good. Uh, oh, actually, no, that's not. So I did say round uh, smooth. Maybe that will be good. There we go. Smooth is what I wanted. Uh, so four headlands should be enough space for this to turn. Let's come out of here then. See where our start point is. Should be just in front of us, I think. Oh, yeah, except it's going the other way around the field. Doesn't matter that we'll uh, just be doing a little bit of the rolling already. There we go. First waypoint, and away it goes. And... Wow, that's actually going pretty fast on that. So I'm going to finish this off and see if we can get one more trailer. Uh, but looks like we're almost done. And at five past five, that is brilliant. I'm, uh, I'm really quite pleased with how well today's gone. We've managed to set up the, uh, the maple syrup. So that's going to only enhance our pancakes. We've managed to get both of our grass fields uh, fully cut and uh, have been up to, I think we're going to have a five and a half to five and three quarter loads off here. So that's great. We should get both these fields rolled uh, and prepared for the next time. Uh, I think we are doing really well on here and... Uh, for our last few videos, I think it's only going to get better. We've got some harvest to do. Uh, we've got some pancake selling to do. 
what would you like to see in the last few videos let me know in the comments down below um, but we have finished this job five and a half trailers exactly pretty much and our roller is going so after a quiet couple of months uh, around here on the western wilds suddenly everything is coming together very quickly uh, as i said we've got both of our arable fields to harvest today so we're going to be getting on with that uh we've got our productions to keep going which is why i've headed up here with my truck in fact on our way through i'm going to pick up a water trailer so the one i'm going to go with is uh it's the joskin aquatrans here it's a little hang on what's the connector on oh, actually the connector on this would be better for our truck it's slightly less expensive yeah this this will do us and it'll do us a couple of runs so i'm gonna go with the chrome setup it is just a water trailer and uh yeah we don't need the license plate on here so let's uh buy that uh, no actually i don't need color on my rims let's uh let's just go eight thousand now we have a little bit of money in the bank because we have uh, sold the uh grass silage that we made last time i have held on to some of it because we do need to feed the cows and at some point today, we're going to have to come up here and get a few hay bales uh, to come and do that with. Um, but uh, in general, uh, it's all good. Need to back this up a little further. There we go. And uh, yeah, we should be able to get the cows producing a load of milk. We're about to have some calves born as well, which is great news. I'm very happy with that. And getting this water trailer on here should mean that we have a really fast way of getting up here and getting water. And of course, this doesn't take milk. We do still have our little milk trailer for that. Now, on top of the other jobs that I've already mentioned today, uh, we also have the grass ready to cut again. Because, of course, it's been three months. Uh, the grass has fully regrown. Rolling it last time actually got us to a full stage of fertilization. So I'm going to be setting off the MB track doing that job today. We'll send that going around with course play. Uh, we'll get all of that done with course play. So we have another round of the silage going through, make us another 30 odd thousand. And the idea is that this actually will be our penultimate episode on this map. Uh, we are going to make as much money as we can today with the idea being that next time we're going to make a load of improvements to the farm, including setting up our house so that we are fully established on here. And I'm really looking forward to that. I think we're going to have uh, a lot of improvements and a lot of setup to do here that, that will turn this survival farm into a fully fledged working operation. As if we're not there already. I mean, we have, we have quite a good operation running here. Let's tip this out. And this should now mean that we can create a whole load of maple syrup for our pancakes. So we can turn that production on. I don't think we are... Yeah, we're not massively out of maple syrup. So what I'm going to do is I'm not going to set this to distributing. I'm going to set it to storing this time and we will just produce it. So let's activate that. Uh, and what we need to get our pancakes going again is the milk. So out here, we will drop off this trailer somewhere where it is uh, not in the way. So just back here a bit. Perfect, because this is only used for the water for here. And then I'm gonna go and hook up the milk trailer and we'll bring a load of milk over as well. So back this up to here. Should be in the right place. Oh, no, a little bit further. Not great at working how close I am to things on here. That's got it. Hook that up. Refill that. We've got 2,000 litres of milk. That is going to be enough to make a lot of pancakes. In fact, I think the rest of the flour that we've got can probably go in here now to help make pancakes so uh, that is absolutely fantastic news 
Let's unload the milk and uh, we can get the pancakes started. There we are. We now have uh, 625 litres of flour. Uh, we've got 604 litres of butter and we've got 2,000 litres of milk, which is the thing we need the most of. Uh, we've got plenty of eggs and plenty of maple syrup. So I'm going to activate that. And yeah, we'll just get the David Brown quickly and go and put another 1,000 litres of flour into here because that will get this running and uh, and hopefully we'll produce a whole load of maple syrup pancakes. So we'll come in here, grab ourselves a pallet of flour, extra 1,000 litres into there. Should give us just under 2,000 litres and we know we're using less flour than we are uh using milk so that will go in there quite nicely i think we're gonna have to feed the cows at some point we definitely need to feed the chickens today um but uh that will come when we actually get our first trailer of wheat so we need to turn this round and get uh this trailer sorted we'll connect that up and we'll go and drop the forks back off. I'll drop the forks over here, actually. will work out well for us. So, drop them there. And then we'll add the sides back onto this trailer so that we can start getting uh, the combine going. Uh, before I get the combine going, though, I want to start the MB track on the grass. Uh, we need to get that going because we know how long that takes. Right, let's get away from the straps. There we go. Agricultural trailer. Customize that. We're going to take it to its extension height. So like that. Customize that. Yes. Okay. Reconnect it up to our tractor. And then that is all ready to go. And we can start the combine in a moment. First, let's hook this up to the mower and get this going on the two fields. We know this this should do a fairly good job. We had a test last time, basically, as how well course play can cut all of our grass on the farm. It's one of those things where, yeah, harvest is the busiest time, especially if this comes up at the same time. So we want to, ideally, I would want to have harvest happening in July. I'm slightly surprised that it didn't. So, uh, yeah, this is, this is not ideal to have all this happening at once. It's not awful. And uh, I'm, I'm not massively unhappy about it. Um, it is just trying to squeeze everything in at the same time is going to be a lot of fun. Let's set a course, and as before, CP2 is where we're going. We want to go counterclockwise around this field, and otherwise, everything's good. So generate me a field work course, and we are... Nope, we want to start work on the headlands. There we go. So starting up here, unfold the mower, and as that comes out, I'll move it into position. We want to make sure the offset is right, which it most definitely is not at the moment. But once it's fully come out, yeah, you can see that is massively in the wrong place. Move that across uh, to two meters should do it. All right, first waypoint. And away it goes. And it should just start cutting from the corner here. And off we go. Perfect. And that means we can start this up and get this going. So it's been a year since we've had our combine out. I do really like this Massey. It's a cracking combine. It did us really well last year. It got, it got through the fields really quickly, which is why I am not concerned at all Uh as to whether we'll actually make it the whole way round these fields. Uh, I'm even starting at sort of 25 past nine. We should have plenty of time to go through. So start her up. Start it up. And 
into the crop and i'm hoping that we are putting a swath down if we're chopping we're chopping we'll turn that off and start putting it down some straw so that we can put that straight into our bga and make even more money off this field and the last row of my second headland and we're up to 77 78 percent full so nearly 80 percent full i think we're going to get a little way into the third headland before we have to empty for the first time uh, which is not too bad we're getting uh around about 13 and a half to 14 tons uh, a hectare here which is a, a pretty good yield as well i know that we've got a hundred percent yield bonus on this field so uh this is uh this is really good i'm i'm very happy with how this wheat is performing yeah we're up to 87 percent, so it won't be long now until we empty for the first time and we made it about two thirds of the way sorry about a third of the way around the field before we needed to empty our first, for our first time. We have a decent amount off here. We should get at least a full trailer load, maybe a, a trailer load and a bit. Let's switch to the back and unload. Yep, that's going very nicely. So, uh, yeah, we, we'll, we're going to get a nice amount off here. We'll give a load to the chickens first off of this wheat because it's cheaper to give the the chickens wheat than it's sorghum and we will uh we'll go from there we will turn all of this into flour flour is really well paying uh, even outside of doing pancakes with it so i'm uh, i'm happy to to go and make a load of flour and sell that next time it really is going to be a big sell-off next video i think we're gonna we're gonna sell off a lot of stuff and try and make a lot of money with my headlands finished we are going to go and cut into the middle here now this is the one where i need to keep straight uh, if i can keep this nice and straight then uh, that's going to make the rest of this field uh, really easy to finish off thankfully at 90 degrees is is the angle i want to be here and we've got a decent amount of space left in the combine so do you know what i'm quite happy with that that's a good cut in i'm actually quite surprised i thought we were gonna get a lot more wheat off here than we got the oats last year uh, but we are only coming up to sort of 90 percent of our second tank of this combine and uh, we've not got a lot of field left i do know that this the, the trailer isn't gonna hold all of this so we we will have some left over in the combine our trailer is not quite two full loads off the combine uh so there's there is that but even so uh, i was expecting to have much more fear it's going to be really interesting doing these two fields back to back seeing exactly how much we get off the sorghum at the same time because yeah i'm not expecting to get really much more than this off the sorghum but we know sorghum play pays so much higher so as our combine is full again we will empty out let's get that in the right place and yeah we're 66 percent full so we're gonna get another third out of this so about half of the combine i think let's empty that out uh, like that and yeah this should fill up our trailer what i'll do is i'll finish off the field i'll go and empty the trailer and uh, then we'll we'll fill it up and empty it again and then get started on the sorghum because at the moment we're making really good time it's only just gone 11 in the morning and <laughs> we yeah uh, we've nearly finished this field so i'm not worried about how long this harvest is going to take us uh, it's more concerning about how long that grass is going to take uh, but we've got a lot of stuff to do around the yard in the meantime so yeah we'll just let the mv track keep working away 
So with our first 10,000 litres of wheat, what we want to do is give the chickens some feed. They have run out and uh, therefore are in very much need of it. Uh, they've been producing eggs well, so I'm quite happy with how they're going. Uh, and we don't need the eggs, really. Come on. Back to here. Interesting that it's not telling me I can tip. There we go. Found the spot. So we'll just tip a load of wheat into here. See how much they take. That's quite a lot they're taking. Are they going to take all of my wheat? I think they are. I'm definitely not going to put more than a trailer in here. In fact, yeah, 1,000 litres left. So they took 9,000 litres of wheat. That is going to keep them going for a very long while. And I'm not too worried about things like that. Yes, we want to make as much money as we can uh, in our last visit. Uh, but I want to make sure that my chickens are fed. I want to make sure my cows are all fed. And that this is still an ongoing concern. This, this farm is still something that would run beyond our final video. So we're not going to be selling anything off. We're just going to be selling uh, whatever products we have. And then uh, seeing what we can buy with that. So I want to do up the house. I want to do a couple of other bits and pieces. And we will go from there. And so our second trailer of wheat... So we had about 4,479 litres uh, left in the combine. The second trailer then is all going to go straight into here. We'll tip this up and get this started. So while the trailer is emptying, uh, we want to go up to our grain mill, activate the wheat because, yep, yeah, all of that is in there. And then this could go back up to the field and we'll get the sorghum cut. Now, this is interesting. We are getting 14 tons an acre for the sorghum, which amazes me. This is producing, well, this has got the same yield as the wheat does and sells for a huge amount more. Uh, in fact, I'm I'm amazed that this is coming out at the same amount. Uh, that's a little bit crazy. So we're expecting uh, about the same off here. So that would be uh, 14, uh, 14,000 litres uh, is what we'll expect at this uh, 14 tonnes uh, an acre or 13 and a half to 14 tonnes an acre. So we'll see if that pans out. But uh, I am... I am flabbergasted that we are getting the same yield off this field here as we were getting off the wheat. And there we are, almost well, almost an ident identical position. We're just shy of the end of this row, so we've made it a little bit further along. But that is definitely a very similar yield between these two fields. I mean, that's that's enough margin of error for this to be uh, to be very very similar. It's. I'm, I am flabbergasted by that. I do want to check the prices because I think I might have misjudged the sorghum. I think the sorghum isn't quite worth as much money as I think it is. And as a result, that's what's causing this. So let's unload that. And in the meantime, I want to have a look at the general prices of sorghum, which is 600. Wow, the train yard's paying a lot for it at the moment. But uh, yeah, so, so 629 versus uh, the wheat, uh, which is, yeah, only 100,000 less. So you take straw into account and actually I'm not surprised anymore that we've got a very similar level of yield because you're going to make about the same money off both of these fields with that kind of uh, of setup so yeah that makes sense uh, i thought the sorghum was worth a lot more money than it is uh, and as a result i've i've misjudged how much we'd actually get from it that seems pretty even in the grand scheme of things 
Again, having finished the headlands, I'm going to try and go straight down the middle of this field. Uh, to me, that looks to be about there. We want to be at 90 degrees and open things up like that. Uh, that looks pretty good. That looks pretty even. Uh, I think we will be okay with this. I wonder if we can get it so that the last bit lines up as well as it did with the wheat. Uh, it's going to be interesting to see where we end up. This should be enough to fill the trailer now. So I'm going to come back on the next row. Uh, empty out. We'll get the auger out and get that done. Uh, the MB track seems to be coming near the end of the grass, which is good news. We want to get that onto the second field. Uh, but if we park this here quickly and just bring this around... Uh, this will allow us to get this filled up and over like so and then uh, there should be enough space in the combine to get the rest of the field done we know we're going to get 10,000 litres uh, into this trailer so knowing that uh, we can then see how much extra we've got looks like the mb track as well is getting uh, fairly low on fuel so that's fine we can get that turned around as well uh, this is this is all good i'm i'm pleased with our yields seems to be fairly good and we've not got a huge amount of field to go today in fact uh, yeah it's coming up to one o'clock and i reckon we've got maybe four more rows to do or at least it would be four more rows to do if I'd actually positioned myself in the right place in the middle of the field. We've got a very thin strip on this side that needs cutting. And we've got a very thin strip on the other side that needs cutting too. So, yeah, we haven't quite positioned in the middle of the field correctly. So we're going to have a little bit of work to get back into uh position and well to get back it's go it's going to cost one more row than uh, originally planned a pity but uh, it's not the end of the world and we're just coming up or we're just past two and a half thousand liters uh, in the combine we might hit that 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 four thousand liter target and there we go we're gonna hit 3337 liters 49 percent full very very interesting that i'm uh yeah I, that has surprised me it's a very similar yield off both fields within a within sort of 700 liters so let's actually get this back to the farm. We'll empty this back at the farm and then I will bring the David Brown back and we can deal with all of that there. But that has been a very successful harvest. And just as I'm bringing the David Brown back, the MB track has finished as well. So we'll bring that back to the yard as well, refuel that, and then we can send that out on its second field. I'm gonna need the mb track actually to feed the cows so what we'll do is maybe go and get those fields wind road up uh, with this in the meantime and well i don't know actually I, no i think we'll go and get them when wind road up i was originally gonna go and do the collection with course play and therefore i needed to get the wind rowing going um, but to be honest, uh, we can probably run all of that ourselves later on. I need to tip this first. So while that's tipping, we'll bring this back. Uh, oh, yeah, that is properly in need of a refuel. So clear that one off and we'll head back to the farm and hopefully have enough fuel to actually make it and get it refueled. Yeah, we've made it, thankfully. So we'll get the fuel into this, uh, get this all turned around, refill this, and then we've got our second field to get this to cut. So I'm going to go and set that up, and uh, we can then get our combine away, and I might be able 
to do the feed for the cows with just the David Brown. Uh, we'll see if it works. If not, we'll have to bring this back in and do it that way. I've emptied out the combine and we're just going to reverse it back into its parking spot over here. Now that that is finished with, go down with that, turn off everything and off goes the combine itself all right up against there and then we can come over to our windmill and get the flower creating from here so into here surprised we don't have any flower in here i'm wondering if this is distributing uh yes this is so i want to change the output mode to storing because I have a feeling we have more than enough flour in here now. Uh, not as much as I thought we might. Uh, so that's actually not too bad. Uh, we are now making pancakes with maple syrup quite nicely. Uh, we have our maple syrup production going pretty well. And we now want to be making sorghum flour as well. So we'll activate that. And yeah, we will then start uh, producing a whole load of flour. So my next job is going to be to feed the cows. We have a nice little bit of uh, these um, silage left over. I've stored a little bit of that. So we'll customize this. What we don't have to go with it is any hay. So I've got an entire trailer full of silage here that we'll we'll tip on the ground we'll use our silage forks to uh to do uh, but i'm gonna go up to the shop uh, actually with those self same silage forks and just grab a few hay bales uh we've got the money to do that i think we'll grab six bring them back here and that should be more than enough to feed the cows uh entire silage bale I'm oh, sorry, an entire hay bale plus a full fork of silage should uh, easily be enough to fill our little feeding wagon. So uh, let's head up to the shop. Let's go and grab that. I'll oh, grab those six bales, head back here, and um, we can get the cows fed while the grass is still being cut. My hope is that a single hay bale with the rest silage should work. So let's get, yeah, let's get six of these. Five, six. Okay, buy that. Yes. Okay. There we go. That's that's working. That'll do. I only need to get them off here one at a time. So uh, that will get them back to the farm. Let's hook this up. Head back to the farm and start making some uh, mixed rations. Okay, so we want to get the ingredients sitting here fairly easily for us to access. Leave this trailer here. And then I need to go and grab the forage wagon. Uh, we have a lot of forage here. Whatever I don't use here, I'm going to put into the BGA. So we will bring this out and then I'm just going to tip a pile over this way here. We'll tip it on the ground. Uh, it should be absolutely fine. Yeah, just over here. Put a nice pile. We might not tip it all because uh, I doubt we're going to need more than uh, half of this trailer. That's going along nicely. Oh, yeah, not a huge amount. That'll do. Hook that all up. We've got no electrical systems on this, of course. So same problem as we normally have. Grab us a bale. So this has a total of four and a half thousand liters. Oh, wow. Really? That's full off that. Uh, and it looks like I've got uh, too many bales. Looks like I did not need six bales. So 1,700 off here of silage to put in. 
followed by is that going in i think that's going in yeah uh followed by whatever comes off a bale and see if that works we may find that even this is not going to give us forage let's see what we got uh will give us forage will it give us tmr tmr fantastic uh we have overspent on the hay bales uh, not that that's a bad thing this one should be enough to fill the cows up i uh, i don't think they need any more feed than this there we go all of that's gone in and yeah the cows are just shy of being full they've got a little bit of hay uh, a lot of tmr and uh, and looking very good so uh hay is 80 percent. so i think it's only a uh, a, a, a small difference it makes to how much milk is produced so we'll empty out the rest of this silage into the bga seeing as we don't need it um i can't believe we've still got four hay bales left i only needed to buy two to feed the cows completely so let's turn that on get that down and start collecting this up wow that david brown is going around this field really fast david brown has finished rowing the first field we'll set it up on the second this time i'm going to reduce the number of headlands and generate me a course and yep again in a great position so we'll just back it off bring it into the field there and away it goes on the second we seem to be getting a better yield off here. We're already two full trailers in. And I'm only on the second headland. And I haven't even completed that. We're, we're, we're just doing so well off these fields. Uh, it's it's going to be a, an absolutely brilliant amount of money off these two. So we're going to get this all collected up and get this all processed. Uh, that will give us a good amount of money. We're going to have to keep an eye on the windmills as well. Uh, get that giving us a good load of money as well. Uh, keep the pancake production going. And hopefully next time we should have everything produced ready for our final wrap up. And just see where we're going to leave the farm. We want to leave it with some good improvements and some good setups. Uh, for now, it's getting to half five in the evening. I will finish off these two fields uh, off camera and get them into our silo and BGA. So this is going to be our last visit to the Western Wilds for this series. Uh, I pretty much achieved everything I wanted to achieve on here by this point. Uh, we do have a couple of little things that we need to process before we start selling things off. Uh, we've got a nice little bit of milk in here there we go that's all hooked up and refill the milk so we've got 472 liters this will just help what we've still got in the pancake factory to process uh we've got a whole load of uh digestate uh, sorry a whole load of silage to get through our bga as well so let's uh, just empty this out a little bit further forwards. And there we go. So that's got that milk into there. And we have a yeah, we have a decent amount of stuff here. We've got four pallets of maple syrup pancakes to sell. So we're going to load those all up. Uh, we've got two pallets of the pure maple syrup to load up. Uh, and we have a lot of flour. We've got a good... Uh, eight nine ten pallets there 13 and then we've still got a little bit processing through so lots to go uh, lots to, to to get sold today and we should make a fair amount of money off of all of this the other thing we've got is some eggs too so yeah there's there's a, a huge amount of stuff sitting around this farm waiting to be sold Let's just back this round here a little bit so it's easier to load up next time. If there was a next time. And uh, disconnect and off. 
Right, and then uh, we do need to go and collect up the straw that is on the field as well. So that's one of my first jobs for this morning too. If we can uh, get all of this processing and get all this through, uh, we will make a tidy sum of money off of all of this. So let's have a look at our production chain setup. Uh, we've got no silage in here. We've got 107,000 litres of grass. So we will activate the grass silage going through. And I hadn't activated this because I didn't want to uh, immediately distribute before I'd worked out what I had it to go through the BGA. Uh, we will then uh, activate the silage in the BGA as well. And we can start getting that going. I do want to spread a little bit of digestate on my grass fields today as well. So uh, we will store that for now. And then we will get that going later. We've got uh, a fair amount of stuff to keep pancakes coming out with maple syrup. So we've got that production running. And uh, we've got a fair amount of water creating maple syrup too. So uh, we're, we're doing well at the moment. We've got enough stuff all over the place. We're going to get those last few bits to process. Uh, meanwhile, we'll get this trailer out and uh, and get the straw collected up and get that processed through our BGA as well. It's looking like we're going to get a decent amount of straw off here too. We are coming up to the end of the first headland and looks like the first headland is just about going to produce a full forage wagon's worth at just 3% shy of that. There we go. Right right round and a little bit to get that done now uh, if that holds up i think we'll get three or four trailers of straw to put through the bga here as well today uh that is that is pretty cool it's not gonna earn us a huge amount of money straw never does uh, but it will earn us just that little bit on top uh, i want to replace the house today that is the big thing i want to do uh, I want to get a shed in, uh, possibly get rid of the old, uh, other old buildings that are kicking around. I think we will finally cut down one of the posts and get rid of all of the uh, messy bits uh, that we've got around here. We certainly need to do that to clear out around the house. So, yeah, we're going to do that as well. Uh, I am first going to clear up the rest of this straw and when once we've done that we'll have a look and see how much is sitting in the BGA. So we've had four full forage wagons so far. This is the last two rows on here so I don't think this is going to give us a full fifth one uh, especially as we took a little bit from the end of that one in order to fill up the last load. Uh, yeah, we're only at about 30%. So I think we might end up being sort of two-thirds full on this. Uh, which is not a bad amount. That's that's really nice, actually. Uh, I'm quite happy with the amount of straw we got off here. This should fill up the BGA for straw. So we'll, uh, we'll take this in, get this processed, and then see where we are from there. Yeah, 56%, so just under two-thirds full. And this will just add a nice little bit extra into here. So bring it in to the tipping point, and... Oh, I'm going to immediately get there. I might be because I need to select the right bit. Yeah, there we go. Empty it out. And then we can go and have a look in the BGA and see exactly how much straw we have ready to process so it looks like we've got 58,000 liters 862 we're gonna have a big amount of electrical charge to sell in fact that the activate that because we've not got anything more to process there let's uh activate the straw going through here then to add to this so that does that, and the silage is just about to run out in here. Uh, but we're only eight minutes from ticking over, so we should get a really nice amount of cash from this in a moment. And then we'll uh, we'll be able to see where we stand. And that's before we start loading up all of our productions. Uh, what I do want to do before we start the load up, though, 
is to go and just spread a little bit of digestate. We can then sell that digestate uh, that remains in the BGA because we won't need that again uh, during this year. We need to go and put it on all of our fields. So uh, that's going to be uh, a nice little job to get done. Uh, it would be interesting to see how far it all goes. Uh, arable fields first, of course, uh, followed by the grass fields. Let's fill this up with this and see how far we go. We got three minutes, though, until we can see how much our first set of sales today has gone. And as time ticks over to 10 o'clock, we've gone from 16,000 to 55,000. So about 40,000 from the uh, from the silage, which is uh, fantastic. Very happy with that. And if we can now get this fertilized with a level of this, it's not going to take us too long to do all four of these fields, I don't think. Uh, we're going to do all four because we didn't roll the grass fields at the end of yesterday. We ran out of time. So, yeah, we'll get this digestate on all these fields. If we have any left over, we will sell it. Otherwise, we're still trying to keep this farm going as a, uh, as a working farm. It's just under two and a half tanks per field uh, for this. So we're finding that we should have enough uh these three fields so it's, it's about fifteen thousand liters per field uh so that means we need about forty-five thousand liters to do these three fields plus a bit we've got thirty-nine thousand liters of digestate left so that's actually really really good for us we are uh, going to have enough to do this uh, we basically need another 12,000 to do this field that we're moving on to. And we're going to need another uh, 15,000 on top. So uh, just under 30,000 litres of this. And yeah, we've got 39,000 litres. So that should be pretty easily enough to do this. We're not even using uh, a full tank on two rows, which is where I've been going with this. Uh, we're, we're getting down to about 4% per, uh, per run. And you can see here, yep, yeah, there we go, 4%. Although I managed to not turn it off, so we've used all of that. I'm glad that we can't use it. Um, but, uh, yeah, we are we have uh, spare enough uh, in order to get all these fields done, which means all these fields are nicely finished off. Doing this wheat field has been so much easier than doing the sorghum field. Uh, we can actually see where we've been before, which is very, very useful. Uh, again, we have used two and a half tanks off this field. So that's very nice. We've also had some money come in from our straw processing. Uh, so that's worked well as well. And yeah, 270 litres left in this. So just the two grass fields to get done as well. We will stop off at the BGA and just start deactivating stuff where we don't need to be spending money. Uh, 74,000 is really, really encouraging, though. Uh, the big thing I want to replace today is we can finally end our survival by no longer living in a tent, uh, which will be absolutely fantastic. Let's deactivate the silage in there. The straw is still processing a little bit more, and we still have 29,000 litres of uh, digestate. Perfect. Down the bottom, uh, we're still processing the sorghum flour. Uh, another 2,800 to go on that. And we've got plenty of pancakes with maple syrup that can still come out. And plenty of maple syrup, too. And this will complete the first of the grass fields. Looking very, very good at the moment. Uh, just need to start getting this one done, and that will be the end of it. I think what I might do is get this tractor doing the... Uh, mulching on the two arable fields while we start to load up 
our actual products to sell and start seeing how much that is. We also need to work out exactly where we're going to be selling everything and try and group our products into uh, those sections. So uh, we'll get this field done and then we'll get on to that. Last little bit of the field and I'm hoping I've filled this up enough. Yes, just. Don't mind leaving a little patch there, but um, otherwise uh, it's all a, a yeah. Otherwise we're using more digestate than I want. I'd rather leave this trailer empty. So let's head round and get this parked up and we can see where we are with this now. Right, let's park this up and see where we are see how much digestate we've got left because of course that will be a nice little income from this and that all or disconnect all of that and we've now worked our way through all the straw so we'll deactivate that we've got nine thousand liters of that so we'll change the output mode to selling for that and that will sell in the next hour. Meanwhile, our pancakes are almost out of milk. So that is almost done. And yeah, the maple syrup is just going to keep going. Meanwhile, we've got a decent amount of flour in here. We've got a little bit of sorghum left. I think it might be time to load some stuff up. First, though, I'm just going to get this going with the mulcher and, uh, and set that mulching field because I think that will be the best use of our time for this tractor. And uh, as I said, plan is to keep this as an ongoing farm and an ongoing concern. So absolutely want to be having uh, stuff going on and jobs being done that need doing while we are selling everything off and improving everything. So that tractor is off doing the mulching. We can start loading things up. So we need to get the forks on the front of this and we need to get our trailer, our flatbed, uh, which after harvest, we have taken the sides off and parked up the side here. And then I need to work out what I can group together to get sold because obviously the more stuff we can take at once the better off we'll be so looking at our sales our eggs can go to the train yard our flour can go to the train yard and uh everything else yeah the maple syrup and the pancakes uh those are going to the selling point yeah oh we actually have a fair bit of slurry we could put into the BJ. Not worth a huge amount of money, in fairness, um, but it is there. So, uh, yeah, we want to get the eggs and the flour loaded up and take down to the train yard. And then we want to load up the maple syrup and the pancakes with maple syrup for the selling station. So let's start with the flour and the eggs. We've got the flour in a fairly good position. In fact, I'm going to turn the trailer round. Uh, because that will give us easy access on both sides to load up all this flour. It's going to be a considerable amount of flour we have to sell today, which is uh, brilliant, to be honest. So let's detach that, and we'll go and get the flour first that is over here. And I'm going to take the stuff off the top first, because that will be easier to access. And we can then get this on the trailer, get this loaded up, and, uh, and we'll go and put the eggs on the top. Because, of course, eggs more breakable than the flour, and, uh, and therefore they would be on the top. We've got quite a large amount of flour here. We are nine pallets in. We've still got three pallets over the other side. No, more than three pallets. We've got four pallets over the other side. Uh, we've got two pallets over here, four, uh, three pallets over here. So that's another seven to go on top. And I'm, I'm thinking that there must be more still in our uh, windmill. So, uh, yeah, we got quite a lot of uh, of this. Oh, come on. Get in there nice and straight, please. Ah. 
so close. Never mind. It's close enough. And it just puts a little bit of a, a bit down the side there. Um, but yeah, that's... I, I, th I think we're going to have like 18 pallets of this. I'm going to try a method to unload them of just pushing them into the cell point rather than uh, trying to just unload uh, a couple at a time. It'll be a little bit quicker and, uh, and hopefully should mean that we can sell them more easily. Otherwise, it is going to be quite a big job to get them unloaded how many have i got here yeah i'm gonna have to go three across still on the second level i don't know if i can fit the eggs on this i think we might have to employ the truck and put the eggs in the truck bed uh, in order to get all of this down here at once because this does look very much like it's just going to be a trailer full of flour Feels like there's a scary amount of weight on this trailer now. Uh, but it's on there. We just need to take the corners really carefully. Uh, we've got just two pallets of flour left in the windmill. In fact, let's have a quick look. See if we're going to get another pallet out. There's still 1,168 litres of sorghum. Uh, it's a 15 to 16, so yes. In fact, we're fairly close to another pallet. So we should be able to get one more pallet off of here and onto this trailer uh, just to complete this and, uh, and end up with a full trailer's worth. Uh, we are going to have to load the eggs into the truck. Uh, to get them at over there as well then because there's no way i'm getting the three pallets of eggs that we have uh, onto this trailer this this tractor just does not reach high enough as great as this david brown has been on this series uh, it is it's not capable of reaching that high to do this uh plus i'm i'm very worried about whether this uh, david brown is gonna fall over trying to get these get that pretty much vertical you can see that's the highest it goes to pretty much so yeah that's uh that's not happening what we do need to try and do is just get these on here and then when we're while we're waiting for that final pallet of flour to come out from the windmill what we can do is just go and load the eggs up into the back of our truck uh, ready to uh, convoy this trailer. Oh, don't flick that. And uh, the truck down to the train yard and get all of this sold off. So these eggs here should be able to fit in here fairly easily. It's a difficult one, this truck bed, because I think the width is just slightly too small for lots of pallets to fit. Uh, yeah, you can see that isn't sitting in there quite as I'd like. Also, the, the movement of the... Oh, actually, no, that has. That's slotted in there quite well. It's then just getting the pallet. Yeah. Right, and then without breaking any eggs, let's carefully push that down. I do kind of need to be able to get at it, so uh, hopefully that won't be too bad. And then we can get two more on there as well. If we pick up two at the same time, uh, that will work pretty well to slot them on. Which does mean I need to make sure I'm coming at these nice and straight. So this top-down view I find really useful for this. Line myself up nice and straight. Then alter my forks like that. And then I should be able to just drive forwards, pick up both pallets, and have a nice, symmetrical, straight collection of the pallets. Really nicely uh, sorted so that then we can just drive up to the back of the truck and slot them onto the flatbed without too much hassle. So into there. Will three fit in here? Yes, three will fit in here quite nicely, actually. Like that. And then we'll do that, that, 
that. But there, we'll strap down, close that up, and then we'll turn this round so that uh, when we've got the trailer done, we can just get this to follow the tractor and trailer as this will run a lot faster than that little David Brown will. And as we get back over here, the final pallet of flour is ready to collect. We might get one more out of here today, but uh, for now, I'm quite happy with this. Uh, this is a grand total of 18 pallets of flour that we have to sell, um, which is absolutely brilliant. That is, that is going to bring in quite a bit of cash. That should certainly give us the money we need to get the farmhouse, which is uh, which is great. I do want to make other improvements to the yard uh, before we finish. Uh, we do need somewhere to store the combine. We could do some lean-tos and just add a little bit more structure to the farm. So, um, yeah, plenty more stuff to do on here uh, that we need more cash for. Um, but at least our initial goals seem like they're going to be met with what we're going to sell now and oh that is quite a bit of weight on the back of this so slow and steady down to the train yard i think we've still got the truck behind us we have so that's uh, absolutely fantastic uh we need i do wonder if i can just push these off into the sell point or if we can get them close enough to the sell point so let's bring up alongside here. Yeah, I'm not sure that's going to work. Okay, let's uh, turn this round. We can uh, get this into a position to easily uh, be unloading stuff from it. Uh, I don't want the truck to come into the back of me, so we'll just leave that to there undo that we can then take this and take the hired worker off i think we'll just position this here like so and open the back and it off we can take off the straps train going through there we are and let's start trying to unload some of this eggs first followed by the productions don't think there's anything else yeah the train the train station is is definitely the best place to sell most stuff here uh it's just getting it so that you can easily and quickly sell it and i think that's why a lot of the the stuff is best sold here because you want it to uh, to be a little bit more, uh, a pay a little bit better because of the extra work you have to put in to actually sell things here. You either need specialist trailers or specialist equipment or so much. And yeah, I was hoping we might get that back one, but I think that's going to be difficult. We might have to reverse the truck quickly just to get those onto the forks uh it is selling quite well these eggs though how much i'd missed how much the first lot sold for uh, we'll keep an eye out and see how much the second lot sell for already sent us over eighty thousand though uh four thousand so yeah we're getting five thousand per pallet which is brilliant Right, let's try and unload these. I'm going to try and do this two pallets at a time, but I'm going to try and do it vertically two pallets at a time. And we'll grab the first two. Hopefully, they will slide out quite nicely. Whoa. Or not. Get the forks in the right place. And on, not into the second one, because four pallets will be too much for this tractor. Okay, and then slowly moving round, we can just put the two pallets on the back of here, like so. And then they sell off. Perfect. 2,953? 
Wow, the eggs itself are so much higher. Uh, not overly surprising. We've also got a lot fewer eggs. Uh, so one and a half thousand per pallet. That is not bad at all. Our total from this flower should be around about 27,000 by my calculation. We're getting 2,900 per stack. In fact, 2,957 per stack. And we've got nine stacks. So, yeah, that should be about 27,000. Just under, in fact, because, of course, uh, this is not quite 3,000. Uh, but it's it's near there. It's uh, only 43 pounds shy. Oh, that has not got on that. There. there we go. Save that. And, yeah, that's why that seemed to report a little bit less. We only did half a pallet at a time. It looks like the price is actually slightly on the rise. We have been getting 2,959 for the last couple of stacks. So, uh, yeah, price is definitely on the rise. We're not selling everything at the best price time uh, because we need to finish up today. 2,959. Right. Can I reverse this truck in such a way that I can then reach these? <laughs> reach these eggs. Don't know if I can. I might have to... Oh, they've shifted back a little bit. That might be just enough to grab these. Let's give it a go and see if it works. Otherwise, I might have to jiggle things around a little bit. And see if I can uh, find another way to get them out the back of this. Okay. Uh, we just need to get them on the tips. Yes. There's the tips. Oh, it's not enough. Right. I have to move things about a bit, I think. You back and forth and I've managed to eventually get them to shift somewhere that's useful. So, let's get them under here. And there we go lift them out onto the trailer and we're up to a hundred and nine thousand brilliant that's exactly where we want to be we just need to go back to the farm now and sell off our maple syrup and our pancakes and see where we end up but uh 113,971 that is a result Selling off the remaining product should be a lot quicker process. We won't need to unload anything. We'll just need to load it up at our end. We've still got the truck following us, but I'll uh, just stop that and park that out of the way in a moment. I want to get the trailer somewhere where we're going to have easy access to it. And um, we do have another pallet of flour. And what I might do is just leave that for the pancake factory. So that that can keep processing stuff. I'll go get rid of this. And then we'll load up the maple syrup and the pancakes. So the pancakes have run out. We're storing. Yeah, we haven't got any more. So we'll deactivate that. I've deactivated the sorghum flour. Because there's no more flour being produced. And in fact, it's almost exactly a pallet that we got out of there. And maple syrup wise, that is just going to keep going. So, yeah, that pallet of flour is actually a really useful thing to keep here. Uh, it would allow uh, continual pancake production uh, to keep going throughout the winter and, uh, and just keep these pancakes coming out. So we are going to leave that there. Really useful to just have that kicking around. Uh, we have five boxes of pancakes and two boxes of... Uh, sorry, three boxes of the uh, maple syrup. So I'm going to just stack pancakes on like this. We can be a little bit more uh, all over the place with this. Uh, it will. Uh, it doesn't need to be massively neat stacking to get everything on. I'm actually really pleased with those eggs. Those eggs just sold for so much money. I was not expecting that at all. 
thankfully the maple syrup and the pancake boxes are roughly the same size so that's going to make it easier to get everything stacked on here you can see that i have been going for speed here rather than uh, accuracy we've got uh, those first four on there but they're a little bit hickledy pickledy uh, which is a phrase i used previously and everybody went i love that phrase I need to use that phrase. And I'm going, I've used that my whole life. That's uh, you know, that's that's a, a common phrase, certainly where I come from. Oh, we've got another pallet of maple syrup come out at that point. So yeah, we must be storing a bit as well, uh, which is good. I mean, that is fantastic. Extra money for us. Doesn't take much maple syrup for the pancake factory, so. Uh, extra maple syrup we can sell is brilliant and that is a great little mod i do like that maple syrup production mod uh it uh, it works well and it's it's served us really well on here with the only input needing to be water has been uh, has been very useful those on to there looks like it is just this single pallet so we'll load this up as well and then we can get all of these up to our sell point at the top of the map and see how much money we're going to end up with. That is, it's really not a bad shout for how much we've earned this year. I'm, uh, I'm very, very pleased with this. So let's get that on there. Wrap all this down because it's very messily on there and we're gonna load this up or hook this up and get it up to our sell point before i head up there though uh we've got this tractor finished mulching the first field we're gonna go and run it on the second field now as well i put it here it should go around the same way so course generate looks exactly as i want it first waypoint and away it goes and we'll bring this up to our sell point over here pulling it over should yeah sell stuff so those are all emptying and the grand total of twenty two thousand nine hundred and no twenty three thousand uh, uh yeah 23700 ish that is absolutely fantastic we've got 137000 pounds to play with to improve our farm so uh let's head back and see what we can do first thing i'm going to do though is stop off at this corner and we're going to go and cut down the sign that gets rid of all of the junk uh, permanently remove all the power lines no loose scrap and trees we want to remove all the loose scrap so after this there it goes so that should be all of the loose uh all of the loose metal and everything should now be removed from this area a nice little bit of cleanup i think the tractor that was in that shed might have gone as well um, but this should clean up the stuff that we had uh, left over from the old chicken coop. Uh, it's removed the big pile of scrap that was there. It should also have removed all of the scrap that uh, was kicking around over here. Yep, there's all the scrap there gone. It has not removed all the scrap from the house here. It's removed a little bit, I think. Yeah, we've got a patch there, but it's not removed all of it. So next thing to do is we are going to sell this. So this will remove these little bits of rubbish and everything. Sell is going to cost us five, nearly 6,000 to get rid of it. But house is gone. There we are. So that is uh, where we're going to build our house. And I've got a really great house, I think, uh, for the farm. We've got this ranch house here, which is a mod and we're gonna put it this way round now if i get the front doorstep right ideally yeah ideally we want to get the front door up to there 
line everything up and that to me looks pretty good there. And there we go there is our brand new ranch house completely set up with donuts lots of people saying in this series can you please uh give yourself a, a proper house and stop living in a tent yeah we have it so that means we can go and remove the tent finally that can also be removed. So, oh, we don't want to sleep. We want to remove it. So, bye-bye uh, tent. We'll demolish that. We'll get £22 back for that. And that leaves us with 31738 to improve our farmyard as well. So I think we can put in, I think we can put in a couple of lean-tos and other bits and pieces. Uh, so I'm going to move some of the equipment into the middle of the yard and then we'll see where we can put some extra buildings in around here. Okay, so everything's been moved into uh, or out of the way. I think we can move the combine as well. We do have uh, a little bit of manure that could be sold out of the... Uh, a bit over here but i'm just gonna leave that for now that's something that, that could be done later we do need to get rid of this though because i think this is uh pretty much in our way i've got some sheds and some lean twos and things i think that would go in here really well so first up we need somewhere to store the combine and i think this shed here is absolutely perfect for this now, I want to put it in the space the combine was in. Uh, this stuff here, though, is massively in the way. In fact, it would go really nicely in this corner. So let's demolish this. Uh, yeah, four this is going to be close. I think we need about 20,000 to do what we want. So that's sold all of that. Uh, we do have all of this manure in here. There's also a gold nugget that we can see sticking out. We're not going to worry about that. Uh, I'm half tempted to, uh, to to get rid of that and, and do that. So let's grab the manure fork and just get rid of this uh, manure in here. Because I'm going to need that space for my combine. And that is the last of it. There was actually a decent amount of manure in here. Uh, that's um, that's not bad. Uh, we'll get that process through. That will give us a little bit of extra cash uh, as well. So we'll process that through the BGA2. Uh, activate that. Uh, yeah, that's going to give us a decent amount. About five to 6,000. Uh, well, no, about 5,000 uh, litres of electricity. Uh, but that's pretty perfect. So... Let's put the larger wooden shelter in here. Lots of overlaps with another object still that we're getting. Uh, about here should do nicely, I think. There we go. So a nice big wooden shed. I think the overlap actually is probably the gold nugget. Uh, but that can stay out the back there now very well. And our combine will now slot really nicely at the back here. A great place for us to store this. And the great thing is on the other side, that is where we can put our cedar. So the cedar will fit in this space very nicely too. It's snug, but it's going to fit. Look at that. So perfect storage for our wider equipment in this shed here. The next shed I want to put in is actually one that's native to the map. It's this one here. Uh, this should go into this spot rather nicely if I put it right up against that pylon and across a bit. Is that going to get in the way of... If we put it right up and merge into there. No, that should... Oh, that's tight. That's really tight. I kind of want to put it there and there should be enough space with that to work. So 
We'll place it manually and override and put it there. Oh, I put it too far back, but never mind. So it's got the uh, the lamp post going through the middle of it. A little bit far back, but uh, happy with that. And we can go and put some of our equipment into that. That has done quite well. We've got a load of our stuff in there as well. And I think we might be able to fit another of those down the side here. So let's try another one of those slotting in here. Yeah, that will actually slot in there. Just not too far back. Otherwise, it will overlap that tree. So uh, about there should do it. Yeah. A little bit straight like that. Again, with the manual placement. And yeah, that works. That works quite well. I'm happy with that too. So everything nestled in here. And uh, we'll get these bits of equipment into there. Back the roller in for the last bit to get in here. I don't know if I can get the plow in here too. It's quite a tight amount of space. Actually, we might be able to. If we get the roller in the right place in here, we might be able to squeeze the plow in. If not, the plow is not a piece of equipment I'm too worried about being outside. Let's try attaching that. There is enough space in there for the plow. So we'll grab that too. And we will just go forward to the morning just to show you guys what the new farmyard looks like. Uh, but yeah, I am pleased with this. That is a very nice setup. In fact, yeah, look, there we go. That is that down and detached. Absolutely brilliant. So happy that we've got the yard sorted before we finish on here. And this is now no longer a survival. This is now a fully fledged, fully working farm. And so morning comes in our brand new ranch house. We are now all set up. We've got our truck here. Lots of improvements that could still be done. But really, really pleased with this. We've got a Fully fledged farmyard here, raring to go. And yeah, what a difference we have in this farmyard. I am absolutely ecstatic with how this series has gone. We have achieved so much in our two years here on the Western Wilds. I hope you have enjoyed watching this series as much as I've had making it. We will be moving over to a brand new series on Zalonka the premium edition map on Sunday. So come and check out. We're going to go and have a look at doing some vegetable farming. Uh, in the meantime, there'll be a map first look on that map too. And we're going to take a first, an overall first look at the DLC as well. For now though, I'm going to leave this here, which means that all that remains is for me to say... Thank you for watching. I hope you've enjoyed this video. Please leave a like, drop us a comment, and give it a share. Special thanks to all my patrons and channel members. Your support is invaluable in making these videos and helping the channel to grow. For more from Virtual Farmer, check out the links below, follow on Twitch to watch live, and for more videos, subscribe and ring that bell. I will see you next time. Goodbye.